Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the casting room. We have some fresh faces here after Aeon Tightrope delivered an amazing uh, couple of series there. Uh, Talisman and Love Nest was so good. Uh, really one of the best. I think probably the best series of the tournament so far. Would you agree? I would definitely agree with that. That was super action-packed. I was at the edge of my seat the entire time, and I was just absolutely astonished at Talisman's level of play. He was extraordinary. It, it he was deserved fantastic. the win. Yeah, I mean, to beat Love Nest as well. It's, he's so good at like controlling everything. Just to let everyone know, if you haven't read already, oh, this side, uh, this is Momo for show, who you may know. He's done some casting uh, in the past for Company of Heroes and uh, is going to be doing excellent analysis, 100% sure of that uh, today. Um, so the next game that we've got lined up for you guys is going to be Jezilin. Uh, versus helping hands and a little bit of information. In fact, uh, I want to just move over to the brackets. Uh, if you guys aren't aware of what has been happening uh, today, well, have a look at this. Jeslin, who lost 2 0 to Talisman, he took down Refer in the lower bracket, which puts him in this next series. Helping hands, though, after losing 2 0 to Love Nest, took out DevM 2 0 in his series. And what was interesting on that? I think it was, uh, it was Crossing in the Woods on one of the maps, playing USF uh, for one of those. And uh, I, I think that was the, uh, the matchup for that. But I spoke to Dev M and he just said, oh God, you know, I struggled in the early game. Uh, that just goes to show like Helping Hands is, uh, is playing really well with the USF in this tournament so far. And uh, likely what we're going to see from him again today. Yeah, what was really cool about that is that um, the series that he lost to Love Nest was also on Crossing. And he didn't give up on the USF play. He just stuck it through and believed in his strategy. And it worked out versus DevM, which was actually, you know, quite surprising. But not at the same time because, you know, these guys have a lot of history together. Mm. They played 2v2 tournaments together. They yep. practiced together. So it could it went either way. And this time Hans came up on top. So good uh, one for him. Hans, uh, I was really concerned the whole way through this that Hans hadn't been practicing very much. Um, but it's, it's, you know, in fact, if anything, he's better than he's ever been. So. Yeah, you never know the secret sessions some players have in practicing. They don't want the word to get out on their strategy. So. I'm surprised Hans has any time in his schedule for secret training or anything. It's, yeah, he's a that busy would mean guy. he's constantly playing over the 24-hour <laughs> uh, period of the day. But uh, we do have the game ready to go in now. So uh, without further ado, let's take you to our lower bracket uh, series. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this lower bracket series. And it is going to be one hell of a series today. In the north side of Feynmanville Approach, playing as the Soviet Union, it is going to be our Spanish master, Jezilin. Helping Hans here in the south uh, on Feynmanville right here. He's playing as uh, Austria, and his tried and true Ostrupin strategy is quite into effect here. He's already queued up one with the MG42 on the way. And um, I think he's been doing this in every single game. He's playing Axis, right? He's done Ostrupin. Yeah, yeah, he has. You're, you're right to point that out. And hopefully Jezelin also knows this uh, is going to be the likely choice. This is a great build. Um, I really like this because the Ostrupin get up on the field quickly. They take all of these really nice pivotal buildings. They long out the engagements because they're a six model squad and they can just stay there and hold the front line. They're cheap to reinforce, it's amazing. But the, the best bit of this is how it leads into tier two, skipping tier one, banking so much manpower, and then you know, focusing on those tier two units like the Flammen, uh, not the Flammenwerfer, the Scout Car. So beautiful strategy. Hopefully Jeslin has an answer though. Yeah, that change uh, a while back where Ostrup and Faust are available after building tier two instead of just being available in tier one was a huge buff to the mm. Doctrine. Um, it lets you do these strategies that Hans has been doing the entire tournament with the Flame Half-Track Rush and not get punished with no Faust. So it's a good strategy from him. It, you know, it totally makes sense why he's doing it every time because it's really consistent. The interesting thing is that even when it didn't have the Faust from Tier 2, Hans still made it work. He you know, still made it work, that yes. That Tier 2 Rush, you know, with the AT gun, there, you still got options. It's not like you're void of options. Uh, but again, all the more stronger. So Hans really in his element with this. Um, this is really his gift to Austria and Company of Heroes, one of the best strategies I've seen him bring. But Jezelin, actually the same that we've seen him play every tournament with Soviets too. 
no uh, deviation from the three conscript build. Yeah, it's classic Jeslin, you know, as long as I've been playing this game, you know, when I joined, Jeslin was the love nest that I know of at that time. He was the one winning tournaments. If you go on his Twitch page, you can see his list of accomplishments. And Soviets is his best faction, in my opinion. And he's really been um, the most consistent when it comes with the conscript strategy. He almost always goes for it. And I, I like to see how he counters these Austrians. And I think he's, was that some Molotovs? Um, yeah, actually, I thought it was very early tech to Molotovs. Uh, let me just have a quick look. Yeah, he's definitely using them there. You can see just burning mushrooms. That's an early tech of those, actually. Yeah, um, I think that's really smart. Um, you know, outside of the RNG fight between the two, uh, two squads here, the Molotovs really give you the edge and can force the Ostrupen out of their bonus cover and basically liquidate them. It's a really good, good start. It's interesting as well, because you're talking about how Ostrup can go and rush those garrisons at the start. Well, Jeslin already providing the early counter to that. Jeslin's also playing the map very well here against Hans, going straight down the center and uh, cutting off the left side of the map and resources that Hans has worked so hard for. Yeah, good cut off there from Jeslin. Um, I would expect him to take up to tier two after getting his medics, I think I just heard. Um, Maxims on this map are pretty decent against Ostrupen if you can cancel their um, their ability to cover the fuel houses. This is, a, this is a fast tier two. This is exactly what we're talking about. You see tier one skipped tier two immediately and uh, probably going to see the uh, the half track as the first option. That's normally the one. Normally yeah. uh, balance it to get munitions immediately for uh, flamethrower objectives. Yeah, the half track is definitely the kingpin kingpin of this strategy that Hans employed throughout the tournament. Uh, it's a really good unit. You know, it's 90 munitions now for the Flamen Warfare upgrade, and it really allows you to get away with um, the Ostrupen Star. There are no LMGs that you need to queue up on your grenadiers. You can just rely on six-man meat squads. I do like it when we get six model squads for both teams. I think it's, uh, even though one is a lot weaker than the other, it's, it looks a bit more fair, right? It looks right, a on bit paper. more like a battle, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, four men running everywhere occasionally. It's, it's just beefy armies. Um, Jeslin actually makes his commander pick early as well. He's gone for guard, rifle, combined arms. Uh, so could see KV1 later into the game. Haven't really seen much of that in this tournament so far, though. Uh, seen a lot of guards and a lot of uh, IL-2s. Yeah, I really like this pick from Jeslin. It's, in my opinion, from his loadouts, it's the ultimate anti-counter to Ostrupen. Those PPSH conscripts will absolutely shred Ostrupen, who can't get any sort of upgrade until uh, Tier 4. So it gives you a lot of time to start hammering down the infantry engagements. Anything with guards in is really useful. Look at the timing of that. Jeslin prioritizing getting guards on the field because he knows, I think, what Hans is doing. As soon as he sees the Ostrupen, he knows that the uh, half-track is going to be on the field uh, at this time. And it's a really good call from Jeslin. Yeah, he had, he had the manpower saved up. He knew exactly what he needed. He knows that Hans has been um, bringing out the half track super early. He's been really consistent on that as well. He's never late. Um, within five to six minute mark, it's out, queuing up the flame uh, upgrade and ready to roll. He's headed out right now. <coughs> I always think it's a bit himself. interesting where you don't see many players timing the pop of the flame projectors. You know, they're kind of just revealing the half track first. It gives a little bit of time to prepare. I kind of like it when you, you go in as it pops and it looks a bit more epic. Like, whoa, where's this coming from? But uh, look at that, Jeslin already presents the guards in front of Helping Hands, and it's a bit of a knockback to the, uh, to the window of the strategy. Yeah, luckily for Hans, he had the Pioneer right on top, and um, I'm assuming he's just going to rotate to the other side, away from the guards. Yeah, it looks like he's going towards the middle. Yeah, his flames are ready now. These things are so powerful. Just automatically, automatically retreats there. <laughs> Second squad of guards for uh, Jeslin. Not a bad shout, not a bad shout at all. Of course, he hasn't gone for a tier structure at the start of his game. Uh, just prioritized medics for healing uh, and strong squads with anti-vehicle capabilities. And I've got, do you know what? I've got no problem with him getting guards out early and vetting them up. Oh yeah, guards are total beast, total um, powerhouse in the Soviet doctrines. 
actually surprised. I mean, not surprised. I was just wrong about the tier 2 prediction there. I was assuming he'd go for, you know, Maxim and then his gun, but guards allow you for that mobile AT to be able to deal with the half-track while still holding onto territory rather than playing a little bit more static with team crews. Um, good engagement there from Jeslin. Subbed out one squad of guards for the other to push up. Mm. I think that's the worry when you do play tier 2, is that it's static support. The AT guns can always get flanked. Exactly. Um, which is just a, a huge, you know, chaotic situation. You've also got to attack AT nades, I think, when, when you do that. So maybe this is a better way of, uh, you know, utilizing fuel that he's got, uh, you know, to, to use the guards instead, maybe get into tier three quicker. That's yeah, you know, abs you know, that's absolutely right. Um, I actually totally forgot that in a series before, Hans actually went double flame half track. So with that in mind, I think Jeslin was taking notes. You know, the, the AT gun would not have been as an efficient counter than double guards. So he definitely made the right call here if he was anticipating a double flame or half track. If Jeslin realizes that helping hands can see him lay the mine there. Yeah, he didn't catch that one and should be an easy sweep for her. Mr. Hans. Yeah, you're teasing me with the thought of a, a double half track in this game. And, uh, couldn't think of anything better against double guards, really. It's uh, keep, keep doubling up the counters. Yeah, all you have to do is really walk up and spray some lava on the ground and kind of back away. You don't have to stick around for too long to get that damage in, which is what Hans is doing. I think he's pulled back for a little bit of repairs. That's a lot of kills, by the way, in the... Uh, a lot of kills for eight minutes into the game. There's a lot happening already at the start of this. Yeah, it's a very lethal uh, start to the game. Not even ten minutes in. It's Molotov and the are going to do. It's good control, I think. Uh, hands. You know, I, th I don't think he had the start with Austrian that he, uh, Austrian that he really wanted. He hasn't been able to just sit in those cover positions as he wanted to. This is great, by the way, line of sight, and he's ground attacking through the hedgerow to burn anything in the building, which is a really good play from hands there, showing great game mechanics. Yeah, great utilization of attack ground, something that you really need to implement into your tool set when you start getting serious about playing this game. Attack ground can take you really far. This, by the way, is just one of the, it's so the crown good. jewels of Austria now. It's so good. As if it wasn't, you know, good enough to get everything, like, the, you can already get the MG and the AT gun with your tier 2 rush. Well, now we'll just drop it for you and you can just build more infantry. And that's actually, I believe, why the Panzer Grenadiers come in so well now uh, as the second unit from tier 2 in this build. Because why not? You know, you've just got something that's able to shred the guards and, and counter them. Austrians just become really good. It's just extremely efficient. I mean, you just think of uh, Germans, right? <laughs> Ausstruppen, th although they're not German, you know, historical accuracy-wise, I guess you could say, but just this whole doctrine with that implementation of the pack drop and the MG34, it just makes it hard not to pick, you know? It's safe, it's I think is the work word I'm looking for. Did something uh, trigger a mine? Was there... Was yeah, there a mine? It. I heard it go off. I think it was the mine here. Uh, was that activated by the flame projector? I th yeah, I think he procked it with the flamethrower. Unless it's that uh, Ausstruppen that's three three models, but I think they're just in base. They did have the minesweepers, so we'd have been able to target it. Maybe with the MG, maybe it was an MG firing on it, but uh, nevertheless, this is good map control from hands at the start, but both players do seem to be getting good control of their resources. Jeslin on the right-hand side with munitions and fuel being cut off by hands presently. Uh, Hans has just had great uh, static control, hasn't been contested too much, but here is the T-70. The god tank. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you just don't go a Soviet game without seeing this unit. It's, uh, you know, it requires no introduction, it's just there. Yeah, even, even if it's super late, you know, people still get it. It's 11 minutes into the game, 12 minute mark really technically, and you still build it because the impact that it has instantly pushes back these Panzer Grenadiers, and it gives you so much space. It does take the pack hit there, um, but it's easily dodged right here by going off to the oh. side of the bushes, but yeah, there's a telemine right there. Oh, he's going straight to base! Look how low these Panzer Grenadiers are. Wow, they didn't actually lose a model after oh all of that. Gosh. They just kept taking uh, health hits. That is so rare that you see that. Yeah, that was pretty lucky for Hans there. He's not going to suffer any manpower bleed, and he gets away with that engagement pretty cleanly. Wow. It's actually one of those things in, in Company of Heroes, which is 
uh, really difficult. It's not, it's not just the models dropping. Each one has its own health, and then right. you just see this little bar, and you're like, well, do they have loads of health? Or, <laughs> or, or is it, you know, does one model have little health, and the rest are fine? You just yeah. have no idea. And Maybe one work. day uh, we'll get a <laughs> revamp in the game, and we'll see the health bars on each guy. One day we'll get a, a manual, I think. Just, uh, <laughs> <you know. laughs> Uh, MG nice here. There on the MG, gets the guard suppressed in green cover because he's not actually in cover to this MG on the side. Almost gets that conscript squad. Ooh, it's really good positioning. Actually, along that wall, I mean, look at the area that he covers with this. Just trying to get the right angle so you can see. That is a really wide area. Yeah, in terms of vision, he just needs something to spot for him, and it's great coverage. Yeah, that's a pristine location. It totally cancels out that um, stone green cover. Yeah. I mean, you just look at the, this part of the map right now. From, from like here to here <laughs> is a complete suppression lockdown by hands. And he's able to burn with the uh, flame projectors anything that comes around the side. It's, it's, it is fantastic play. What is the T70 fancy at the moment? This is smart by Jezlin. He's going to uh, sneak up close. He's uh, avoided line of sight from the AT gun, which is now spotted. He's able to use the house for cover. Not able to deflect that wow. first shot, though. That was a quick shot off by the pack, followed up by these Panzer Grands. Good thing that Jezlin got out of there. He would definitely eat the full barrage. Still goes for it anyway. I don't know if that was an attack ground attempt or if he actually got the space to shoot the shoot the pipes. I think at that range it would be uh, yeah, attack, attack ground. ground attack. It's a good idea. I mean, I'm seeing a lot of movement from Hans. I'm seeing him be uh, kind of aggressive all over the field. Not enough that he's just got great defensive positions. He's also making himself uh, aggressive on the front lines. And, yeah. uh, Jeslin's having to work very, very hard, but Jeslin's still playing well. He's not lost anything. He's still got resources. Uh, you know, worth noting anything he's really losing in his VPs right now. He's uh, not without tools to play. Yeah, he's definitely fighting back. Um, Hans is doing a really good job of implementing the austere combined arms. You know, he's got multiple MGs. They're supported with um, other infantry units. He's got the AT package there. And it is South, Fam South Famonville as well, which does aid this strategy a lot, you know, with the pack drop and the MGs. It's mm -hmm. nice and open in this area. There isn't as much shot blockers or true sight, you know, obstacles. But Jeslin is still definitely in the game. He's got a fuel under his control. He's still fighting back. Got a good flank on the MG here, but it's, don't think it's really going to come out to anything. He's got support. He can easily just walk back here. T70 um, is yeah. definitely something that'll make you retreat, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that just caught a little bit off guard there. It was uh, smart of Jeslin to make the play and force it away, but. Yeah, I'm glad he got the mortar there, though. He definitely needed this. Either to utilize the smoke drop. Um, oh, this conscript. Oh, good wipe there from Hans. Just looked away at the uh, initial bundle grenade detonation. But, uh, caught that last model dropping. And uh, as you said, yeah, the mortar, which is uh, currently actually firing on the Panzer Grenadiers, needs to uh, focus on this house in the center, which is pinning down multiple squads. It's supported by the flame projectors on the half track. Yeah, he's locked him down. He, you know, he specifically needed the mortar to get this MG out the house because he's just walking into a wall. You know, every single time he comes through the middle there, he's getting suppressed. And, you know, as every minute passes by, Hans is going to tech up. You know, he's already getting the P4 out. It's coming out right this second. And he doesn't have an AT gun. He's got double guards that are just really light counters to this yeah, without using a crap ton of munitions and the mark target and the buttons. Um, this is going to be a real problem for Jeslin. Can you see that? this burning tree here? <laughs> some like biblical, <laughs> the apocalypse some biblical is stuff going on with this tree here. But, uh... <clears throat> yeah, it looks like he's teched up right here to tier four, but he's quite a not too much manpower away from the T34. He's got to wait a little bit. It's got to stall once he sees his P4. He's probably going to have to pull back a little bit to conserve some manpower and not. Um, he's stuck in his base. <gasps> oh my god! What a hit from that Panzer IV! Dude, that was disgusting. They oh. all got on top of each other there in the corner and just got wasted. Yep, that is retreat clumping at its finest. And you know what? Actually, in the last game, that we, uh, well, the last series that we saw with Talisman and uh, Loveness, we saw the exact same thing with a penal battalion yep. uh, on that side. So it was uh, nasty. Something about the retreat paths on that side of the map today. It kind of hurts your soul as a Company of Heroes player when you see that happen. It really but does. But it is part of the game. <laughs> and it's fun to watch. It is, yeah. <laughs> There's one thing about Company Heroes, it's fun to watch. 
Absolutely. As long as someone else is miserable. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> But let's have a quick look at the match stats at the moment. Still, things pretty even in terms of uh, in terms of stats, but stats don't tell you everything. Something that does tell you a lot, though, is the VP score. Jeslin still hasn't really managed to get a control of two VPs for a large portion of the game. I mean, the Helping Hands is currently 442 VP lead. Yeah, he's completely pushed him off that fuel. Jeslin held on to it for a bit of time, but now there's nothing really that can fight against this composition that Hans has. This is T34 has to be used perfectly for him to make a comeback mm. here. It's, you know, Hans, either that or Hans makes a really brave mistake and, you know, throws away his P4 somehow, but I don't really see that happening. He's got really good income in his munitions. He can use all his abilities. He's got plenty of anti-tank. And most important of all, I don't think he's lost anything. Jeslin's already lost uh, conscript there. I mean, Hans does have a tendency sometimes to throw some things in. Uh, do you know what I mean? He, I, I've seen him get to a point where he's like, yeah, do you know what? I've got this in the bag. And he throws it in. Yeah, he's overconfident. I've, I've definitely seen that. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the, the good hands, the hands that we like, I think, uh, does take good engagements, but it also plays a very safe game when he's got the game in the bag. And uh, look at this. The uh, hands of Grenadiers there. They're going to get two Shreks. Both of them connect. Probably requires one more shot from the Panzer oh, IV here. Gets line of sight. Around. It's oh. out of control. T70 is down, and now Jeslin feels a little bit like he has to make a push here to try and deal with this Panzer IV. Panzer Grenadier should have reloaded. Double miss there from the Shreks. Yeah, that was an unfortunate loss. He really couldn't afford to lose that. I thought he was going to try to do the little uh, maneuver around the house, especially since he got lucky from the P4 missing its first shot. But well, that's a great pickup for Hans, and he's queuing up his second P4 to try to seal the game. So every single game that we've cast of Jeslin uh, in the series, he's always taken the first game to kind of test his opponent out. Uh, the first game has always been a all, all across the series, even with Referro. You know, Referro won the first game uh, in the series, the last one. So you know, I just you don't really see Jeslin until game two. Um, that's that's kind of been the trend of the of the tournament so far. But, you know, it's like he's not really made mistakes. The build order was actually, I think, quite sound. No, solid, the, yeah, for sure. He had everything, you know, <laughs> nailed down. But where has it gone wrong? Uh, <laughs> we don't know. I just think Hans had the anti-strat, you know. I did say that Jeslin had that with the PPSHs, but he never got any on them. And um, he really just put his weight put the weight on the guards to fight back and Hans played it really well and kited away with his flame half track. Didn't give Jeslin much space with the T70 and it was already a late T70. And look at this, the T34 is about to die here. Oh, that's definitely got to be game now. I think so, yep. Jeslin, he's uh, thinking about using the uh, Sturmovic airstrike. Here it comes now. Look at him trying to chase all these plans are going to do. Too straight. many trees in the way. That is <laughs> after that blocking them so all in. On this angle. Maximum efficiency there. <laughs> that was brutal. That couldn't have gone worse for a retreat, <laughs> to be honest. But fortunately, not not a lot of uh, damage caused. Oh, this is gun that's going to get circled right here. There's nothing really to help it out. Get that one shot in, and it's on the road. The guards are up to the side, but they're max range, so won't really be able to do anything here. Oh, Jaslin is not even trying to uh, get that AT gun out of there. They're still trying to take shots. Hands of four. He's going for the attack round here. I like this as an idea. Oh. Both of them miss. Yeah, that was right on top of it, but that happens. Oh, that that's a, a nice one, though. Yeah. It's much better. Actually, credit to Jeslin, even in every game this series, he's, um, sorry, this tournament, played very, very well with ground attack on the AT guns. Uh, also, barrages from the AT guns done a really, really good job. Wow. He's sticking it through. I mean, it's smart to not throw in the towel here because you can still get some VPs off of your opponent here, even if you know you're going to lose because it is relevant for the next two games potentially because you kind of want to give yourself as much space as possible in the VPs so that just maybe you'll have the selection in game three. Um, something that is definitely a quality of a experienced tournament player such as Jeslin. Oh, that was a good name. <laughs> Work around that one too greatly. 
Yeah, yeah Hans has just got the lockdown. He's always moving his MGs after they get into an engagement so that Jeslin has to guess, you know, where it's repositioned and where the arc might be. Well, we could see another wipe there. That was close. Clumped conscripts. You can almost see it happening, can't you? It's <laughs> always on that side of the map at the moment. It's the PTSD from it happening to you before. <laughs> you just expect it to happen. <laughs> The AT gun there, Jeslin's got a, a good position waiting for that Panzer IV. There we go, line of sight has good just come on. My button, yeah, good button. No Panzer Tactician to use right here. This might actually, oh, that was a nasty shot. This gun actually had to reposition, but it should be going down here. Oh, oh, he nice. does actually get it. That was and a good pickup. Yeah, I thought for a moment that that might not happen. Are we going to see the Panzer IV take a shot at a house in middle? He's got to be really careful when those buildings do have low health. BT gun on the duress, going to have to move back to base. Always looking for the uh, Faust from these Ostrupen. Nice maneuver. There is still life in Jezlin. Yeah, I mean, that certainly helps, you know, kickstart your momentum back. But he's got to pull back to base and reinforce his guards, heal up. Um, and definitely get that T-34 out of Faust range before he goes back on the field, because Hans has got the presence on the map. You can hide along the middle uh, side of the map behind the hedgerows. We've seen other people do with penal battalions when they want to throw satchels. You know, you can do the same kind of ambushes with anything that has a snare. So you need to get your tanks fully healed up, you know, unless you're down to like 10 VPs. And we see Jezlin here switch sides, which is a good idea. It's nice and open, so you can't really hide, you know, squads. It's uh, sensible. I also like you see him running with the uh, minesweepers on the engineers at the forward position really really good because he doesn't want to catch a telemine anywhere that would be lethal for the t-34 so yep. he's making sure he's get good recon and uh, scouting for mines and uh, he's just trying, gotta, gotta keep hold of that vp it's a bad setup from hands oh, there looked like an attack move setup that didn't oh no he's probably set it up from anyway, he noticed? Noticed? He no he's it. gonna lose this wow definitely don't want that <laughs> right on the VP, especially. 25 minutes in, still uh, kicking some butt. Half track with the flamethrower projectors. It's such a good unit. It's so strong. Potentially even just follow this all the way. He really wants to go for it. Looks like he is. Although this is one, sh one shot from death. Yeah, the T-34 is coming to respond here. He notices it, backs up. Yeah, you see it in this game. Uh, Hans has better positioning. I mean, with all the support weapons, uh, you know, when you, you look at Jezlin and the way that he is right now, this doesn't really cover the, the best position. But every time you see Hans with an AT gun, every time you see... Uh, every time you see, uh, you know, like Hans, he's just got it, got it nailed. Fortunately missed the kill shot there, but it definitely sealed the game up on the spot. But um he does get away with a pixel, Enemy pixel health. But you know, Hans, outside of that MG loss right there, there isn't really much time for Jeslin to neutralize. He is gonna decap the left VP. Um, it's really, really gonna be tough for him to make a make a foothold on these VPs now. I don't really see how he it's, can do it here. He needs smoke. He's going to need to use smoke from the mortar, I think, at least to get past the MG. Yeah, um, that's something we haven't seen him use. You're absolutely right. Yeah, it's probably one of the last options he's got to play against support weapons. And the Ostrup are, uh, you know, they're not, they're not beefy <laughs> by any means. It definitely shouldn't be uh, uh, overpowering the guards. It's uh, just the suppression, I think, that uh, Jesen's really struggling with right now. Yeah. You did. I think um, I, I, I would always be worried that we're going to see a Katusha here from Jeslin. Um, if he uses a Katusha as a response to the support weapons, I've never seen him use one properly. I don't think I have either. <laughs> I think he's just going straight T-34 spam. But um, Hans did get the, the Broombar out. He's upgraded two of his Ostrup into MG with MG-42s. Broombar is just a beast. It is. This thing is... Crazy, you know. When you see that on the field, you should be scared. This yeah. thing can just walk up and wipe your unit back off, force another one off. Like, all right, well, let's call it right here. It, it, it's such a good comp. Oh, there's the smoke uh, from the mortar. I think so you heard actually, us. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Justin's got us uh, hacked with radio intercept. They're picking off some ideas, but. Uh, 
Actually, the Brumbai, just it's such a good compliment to be just talking about the Ostrupen in mm -hmm. terms of their strength. Well, actually, if you've got the Brumba landing shells on uh, the guards, well, then that's going to make things even harder for Jeslin. It's just now going for conscripts as well as part of his build. Um, some extra conscripts. And with the Brumbar on the field, you can't really utilize those um, hit the dirt abilities that uh, Jeslin can use here because you're going to clump up a bit more and just eat the shells. Nice attempt here to flank from Jeslin, but it pings off the frontal armor and he takes two shots in return. He's got to pull back. He's bleeding out, 54 VPs. He's got to just do something, maybe just force Hans off so he can get a triple cap going, get some VPs down. Because Hans has been at 442 for quite a, quite a while now. I actually have to say, like the way that he retreated that uh, T-34 really makes me think that he's not confident to play around AT guns and, and kind of play on the front lines of line of sight. Here we have a big push though, T-34s are starting to come in. They're not really got the health oh. of this engagement, I think. Lower T-34 is trying to flank around the back of the Panzer IV. Second one's coming in. Could have seen a ram there perhaps, but Jeslin not wanting to waste the T-34. He just hasn't been able to penetrate the frontal armor. Yeah, that was a little unlucky there. He bounced more than twice, I think, off the Brumba. Oh, and he but wasn't able to get around that uh, AT gun either, which was took a shot needlessly. We have lost an you know, yeah. after all that, though, look at Hans' uh, units. He actually lost a fair oh bit of the T-34. Oh my got the miracle shot oh. off on that. Pack gun hero, veteran C2 now. Love me some packs. More than raquettes. Wow. I mean, that was really well played by Hans. He had everything there that he needed to support. You know, he kind of, you could tell that he sensed the push was coming when the T-34 showed its face initially. So he did well at supporting all his units. He didn't leave them all around, you know, he didn't get overconfident in the VP situation. And now he's going to be able to come back on top and finish the game out. Jeslin is bleeding some VPs though, so it is pretty relevant. <laughs> We love Close. seeing the Brumba. It looks like uh, Ostrupen died and gave an LMG to the Conscript too, in all that engagement. We missed the that. The Ostrupen, I think. Oh, there might be a. Uh, it's the DP. Uh, I'm DP. pretty sure there was another Ostrupen that died around here. Uh, in fact. Yeah, that's the one uh, that uh, dropped the LMG. Right, right. So, uh, yeah, I guess they're just trade trading weapons. <laughs> uh, an act of friendship and company for us too. <laughs> like, I'll drop my PTRS and you give me the LMG and we'll, <laughs> we'll fight with, uh, with each other's swords. <laughs> uh, I like this, by the way, from Hans. He's just going to uh, ground attack this building, set yeah, it on fire. This is beautiful. This is There's nothing nicer than just watching the... Oh, okay. Jeslin thinks it's a great idea to get back into this burning <laughs> structure. I would oh, disagree, Jeslin. Oh, I think that's a terrible idea. That's... And I think you're about to lose a squad. Oh, uh, you fucked that up the mistake. <laughs> yeah, that was brutal. Instantly just took half his health when he got into the house. Uh, helping hands there. He was trying to get around the arc of fire from the MG there. Didn't quite manage it. Both squads suppressed. That's going to give Jeslin time to uh, time to defend. Interestingly, I think the conscripts on Veteran C2 have a 40% accuracy bonus, I think. I don't know if that's still... Uh, still uh, counts on the conscripts. So it is with that LMG. They're very. Uh, I think you're right. I'm just not sure because there were some changes beforehand. So I wouldn't quote me on that being right. Oh, oh did my you see God. that? Did you see that? I've never seen that happen Whoa. before. Okay. You got the perfect angle on that. I God. Do you know what? These planes are actual tanks. And dude, did we just see it take a? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a railway <laughs> artillery shell. What a way to end that game. That was perfect. <sighs> Pro tactics from Jeslin. My god. Oh my god. <laughs> Talk about skill planes, dude. That's a different <laughs> rendition of that whole term. <laughs> GG. <laughs>
I can't uh, and believe it. That isn't actually the most incredible thing I've seen one of those take. Um, I've actually seen uh, a JU87 take a B4 and fly off. Uh, and the B4 would fire, yeah. yeah. Do you, ha you don't have a clip of that, right? I, I, I clipped, but Twitch is bad for clipping. Yeah, it you're like right. The, yeah, the wrong it messes side. it all up. But that was, that was a good um, second place. <sighs> I think that's going gonna get a lot of views. I think so, I think so. Ad that revenue. Was... <laughs> <laughs> Straight from Stormless's channel, folks. That was awesome, though. That I mean, was, yeah. So not for Jeslin, but... <sighs> no, that was, it, no. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about this first game. So I mentioned earlier, Jeslin seems to take a warm-up game every time. So right. I don't want to just say, you know, that's a poor play by Jeslin. I think we'll see him pick up, but uh, gotta say, hands this tournament, unexpectedly to say, he's doing very well. Uh, he's He's much better than I see him in tournaments. Whenever we get to a live event, you saw it last year, he kind of croaked uh, mm. when he played against Von Ivan, and uh, it, it wasn't great to see, but now he's confident. Uh, he's playing, you can you can sense it. His positioning's on point. Uh, everything is looking really, really good. I mean, you got any comments from... Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. Um, after he got sent to the loser side, it was kind of like a wake-up call for him. Mm. You know, he's like, you know, this is double elimination. It's not like last time where I'm just out. I have another chance to come back. And he's showing that he's making great use of the second chance that he got, the second chance at life. And if he keeps it up, I can see him going straight to the finals. Yeah. And he's playing mm -hmm. really, really well. And you can just tell he's, he's keeping track of every kind of engagement. If you notice like the minor things like his MG placements, mm -hmm. he's moving it around a lot. He's switching it up on his opponents so that they're not coming in and expecting the same kind of engagement yeah and yep. his strategy you know even though he's doing it all the time maybe some people consider that you know not fun but it works and he's he does it really well so there's no reason for him to switch it out i think um, that, that's one of the things actually with this strategy it's kind of his thing he brought it into the scene as far as i know he brought it into the scene um and he knows it inside out he uses it all the time and it's like even when you know jesselyn i think clearly knew because we saw the tech to molotovs yep. we you know see this he early. Got the mollies. that's not a natural thing to do that's the kind mm -hmm. of i know what you're doing and still hans is just you know dominant dominant player um well played. But uh, yeah, great first game of the series, guys. Don't go anywhere. We do have a very short break between games just while players take a little rest uh, and also just get the next games uh, started. Referees are doing an amazing job at this event. Uh, yep. Credit to them. They've just been so helpful, uh, as well as all the mods on Twitch and everyone else that's helped to make this uh, such an awesome event so far. Uh, please don't around, go anywhere. And if you are enjoying the casting and the games, please do share out the stream and let's get as many people here uh, for games two and potentially three of this lower bracket. Yes, see you please. Soon. Three games. <laughs> That's what three, I want to see. We want three games. <laughs>
Hello everybody and welcome to game two of this lower bracket series. We have got uh, one player that looked incredibly on form in game one, winning as Ostir, now playing as USF on the north side of Feynmanville Approach. It is going to be your hero, Helping Hands. You need something and the Spanish giant here, Mr. Hezilin, I guess is the right way to say it. <laughs> He's playing Ostir now on the south spawn. He's looking to redeem himself from that last game. He's going to give it right back to Hans. Um, I'm really excited to see what he pulls out of here, you know, outside of what we expect already, the 2-5-1 half track. See how well he can use it. Um, just one thing I wanted to note with Hans is that I didn't really realize that he's been so fully committed into the USF uh, faction. Yeah. You know, yeah. it looks like he just totally shelved Brits and he's on that Pershing train. Uh, can you blame him? No, really? <laughs> no, the Pershing is the best heavy tank yeah. all around, yeah. 100%. And you know, what's funny is what AE was talking about yesterday is how it's uh, it's not even USF, it's just stall for Pershing faction. It and is. it's true. In 1v1, it it's true for sure. Yeah, uh, you're completely right. The, the stalling for the Pershing is the best. I mean, like with Austere, I feel like I, I want to start playing the elephant in 1v1. <laughs> <laughs> just, just so I can leave it at the back and maybe keep the Pershing at bay. It is ferocious. And I mean, because of the way it wipes infantry, the veterancy goes up quickly. Then it starts throwing grenades from, the, from the hatch. Absurd. Like, what the hell? And, and it's typical of Relic. Like, every time they design a faction or a, a commander, they're like, let's take this up a notch. Until you end up with, you know, it's like the Churchill as well, which repairs on the move, throws grenades out of the hatch, has a flamethrower projector <laughs> the size of, like, the map width. I'm like, oh my god. But, uh, no, I, you know, Hans is uh, absolutely right to be utilizing that unit as USF. And, uh, you know, he plays very good USF around it too. That's, that's not... Uh, it's not put him down as a one-unit player. No, yeah, he's he's made a good start here. He's been playing aggressive, which is really what you want to do against Austria. They don't have the meat advantage that they do with the OKW matchup. So you want to play aggressive, keep them on their toes. Don't let them set up with the MG42 on your cutoff. Um, so he started out really well, and he kept his two initial squads, the Rifleman and the Rear Echelon, on the fuel and pushed away that potential setup that Jeslin was looking for. Um, and he's just probing every side, which is really smart because you want to see where your opponent's weak, where he's strong. And this right engagement is pretty textbook, you know. He enveloped this Pioneer, forced it off. If he gets a good body block here, which he kind of did there, he's going to get the wipe on this for sure. Oh, wow, you what could, a good You could see there. him just shuffle the squad to the left there to oh, try and get that. No. What a suppression. <laughs> Caster's curse. I'm so sorry, Hans. <laughs> That but was that was unfortunate. Don't be um, sorry, that was amazing. MG42 saving that pioneer. Um, but but again, like as you say, helping hands. He's just so good at the body blocking. Um, you know, he's just shifting the models left and right, using the stop key to uh, to block. Fantastic play in the early game. Uh, Jeslin, though, being very aggressive as Austere, he's going to go uh, try and decap any resources hands has on the right, and I'm sure we'll see him swing to the left very shortly. Yeah, Jeslin isn't cutting off too much by going there. He's only cutting off the munitions, but I mean, it's only the next logical point to go to. Um, he's pulling back here, which is smart, utilizing the cover. But honestly, you, you kind of want to just pull back in this spot because you're not really fighting for too much there. And Hans is right outside of his base. He can just soft retreat and, and reinforce back to full. Mm. Just uh, interesting to see how Jeslin's going to be using position of his MG42s in this game. Hans had an amazing uh, game in terms of positioning previously. <coughs> Jeslin's got a lot to compare to. Yeah, a lieutenant coming out for Hans. He's queued up a 50 cal right away, which is um, it's pretty standard now. Um, I'm not sure. I think the last time he played USF with the lieutenant start, he did not build a uh, what is it, the M15? He went mm. for the M20 against Loveness because he was anticipating a sniper. Right, right. Um, honestly, I have no idea what would be the right call here for him because, as you know, mobile defense is a really good counter to all the light vehicles USF can bring out on the field. 
So I think he's playing it smart by playing the infantry game. You know, the riflemen, once they get bars, they're going to run over grenadiers at um, most ranges. And the 50 cal can really start locking down the cutoff for him. Especially when you're just winning these engagements like that. This is going really well for him. It's a really tough start for us there, actually, against, uh, against USF. Obviously, every time you tech, USF gets that free squad. Yep. It just makes it a little bit more overwhelming. You've already got four-man squads. You know, mm -hmm. the squads that are coming out of five men. It could be crazy. Add to that suppression, you're absolutely right. Uh, we did see uh, Hans tried to decap here with this uh, strategic point outside of Jeslin's base because the VP was linking through still. Right. So not quite the uh, resource cut that he wanted. But again, you can just see here, like Hans, so confident on the map. He dealt with Jeslin everywhere he went at the start of the game. And now he's just putting a big, uh, a big kind of block outside his yeah. base and saying, uh, fight me. Yeah, he's bringing the fight straight to him. Um, he's utilizing this middle house again with the MG inside of it, really forcing Jeslin to answer it by building something else. You know, he just finished his battle phase tech up. He hasn't quite yet put the building down, though. Um, I'm assuming he's just going to go straight for the um, 251. It's not still, it's not late for that. You'll have the munitions by the time everything's said and done. The 222 uh, two, two isn't really going to accomplish too much here. There isn't anything that's strictly countering. Uh, the 50 cal can keep it at bay even without using the uh, AP rounds. Uh, maybe he's just going to play it safe and get a pack. It's really It could go either way, honestly, from this point. But he definitely needs something to deal with this um, uh, 50 cal because this thing is super strong. It's such it's a tough one. I mean, oh with, wow! Did you again, great suppression. <laughs> yeah, did you see that? He was literally a millisecond from getting that rifle nade off, but that instant suppression with him being in red cover was just enough. And he did get another nade out of him. Minus 30 munitions there for Jeslin. Easy retreat for Hans. Yeah, Hans uh, predicted that very well. Mm -hmm. I think he knew that the unit was coming up. Predicted the likelihood of a rifle grenade and, and made the retreat. I mean, oh, that was a pack down time, so he, he did calculate that in advance, and it. Kind of goes to show that he's uh, really got his head in the game in this series. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think this is really tough. I, I do think it's tough for the USF Austin matchup. I, I like this, by the way. Telemine's really, oh, yeah. really vital. Uh, I mean, if he does go for the tier two, say he brings out a scout car or a half track, the lieutenant half, you know, the half track that comes from the lieutenant tech is so strong against tier two Austin. You know, yep. especially that it can suppress on the move. The max range is outside the firing range of Panzer Shrek. So it, it's a really good unit. It's a high skill unit. <clears throat> if you can utilize it well, yeah. it's going to reward you yeah. handsomely. Yeah. The unit is super strong. And you know, that's where the Teller Mine comes in because it's just going to one shot anything that comes out of Captain and Lieutenant. So Easy. good good anticipation there by Jeslin. Um, I really like that spot too because it's not super obvious like a road, you know, where people expect you to put mines. Um, hopefully it works out, you know, that's always there for him in case even a tank comes out later, it can, you know, mines win games, is yeah, what I'm trying yeah, to get out here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I absolutely agree with you. It's, um, I mean, that as a location is a bit ballsy. You've got the uh, echelons here with the minesweepers. They are going to run past this and, yeah, and detect that's, it. That's the disadvantage I from think, that. Uh, We've actually got the event queue off of the left-hand side minimap at the moment, but uh, when the mines are detected, obviously it like pings the message up there and it comes mm -hmm. to mine detected. If Hans is paying attention, he'll know immediately. Um, but whether or not that happens, this is a great rifle grenade. Oh, Hans, he moves just forward short. again. I don't know yeah. if he knew a little. Yeah, that was just a bit short. He might actually pick up this Gren squad um, if he runs along this red cover right here. Now he he disengaged from that fight, which I think was the right call. Um, it's really hard to gauge if you're actually going to get it. So you have to make the decision there. Do I want to go for this wipe strictly and instantly retreat if I get it and don't get it? Or do I want to try to win this second fight with this other squad, which I think he actually did, which lets him decap the fuel. So it's pretty relevant. Oh, no, he pulled back. Just an interesting one. I noticed uh, the, yeah. the red cover is, is here, but not mm -hmm. along that road anymore. Um, yeah, I don't know. So, yeah, Maybe it has to like do with the fence. Like It gives a little extra range on the, on the buff. If we had our good friend Monolithic Bacon here, <laughs> uh, who I'm sure is probably watching, uh, you know, he'd be able to tell us all about it in great detail. But uh, so many changes to things oh, yeah. and maps. I, I don't know if you remember, I think, I think it was last year, that these houses were bugged. Do you remember this? Mm -hmm. Where you could like ram it uh, just slightly. And it uh, would just <laughs> collapse. <laughs> no, it would yeah, collapse. it was actually pretty, pretty annoying because, you know, yeah. you couldn't really utilize the house anymore. So... It would just be to the advantage of whoever side that was, where they wouldn't have to worry about keeping that house occupied or 
yeah. or away from the opponent. But, you know... I always say, like, in Company of Heroes, you're either a viewer or a player, and I think it puts me in a viewer, because I still find that really enjoyable to watch. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, for it's sure. hilarious. I agree. Like, as a viewer, it's just, it's so exciting and entertaining. But uh, anyway, now things are starting to get a bit uh, heated up again after a little lull in activity. You're seeing lots of rifle grenades from Jeslin. Lots and, of dodges, uh, too. And Jeslin can't really be affording, can't really afford to just throw those out there. His income's pretty poor on the munition side. And Asir is a munition heavy doctrine, you know. I don't think he's queued up any LMGs yet. Well, he's got, he's got one on there. But yeah, like you say, he's. I mean, He's going to rely on rifle grenades to get wipes, of which the three haven't really worked so mm -hmm. far. Uh, it's time to start giving up that strategy and uh, just make sure that your infantry are as upgraded as possible. It's uh, just as comfortable to just play without for the moment. That's going to put him as a, at a disadvantage uh, against the many, many bars that Hans oh, is now putting on his units. <coughs> okay, he did get one MG42 off. That's good, but he's definitely behind still. Um, USF definitely tends to float a lot of munitions now in the early game since there is no, there are no nades really that you can get anymore. Do you know what? I am so upset because I was going to make a comment earlier about we haven't seen any players skip tier two in this game, right? And he's only gone and done it the one time. <laughs> the one time you're going to. I backed off of it, <laughs> and actually he has done that. He's uh, he's skipping that tier. He's gone straight to tier three and is building the Ostwind. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is a strategy that is difficult to pull off because you leave yourself without AT. He's got mobile defense if he wants it for the Puma, but you know, without the AT guns, like the pack guns. It's still. really, really uh, risky, but it looks like he actually canceled it. Um, That's interesting. I think he just wants to play it safe here and get the P4. I think that really tells us that he's uncertain about Hans's fuel situation right now. Like, what? Mm. If he's got Major out, you know, it's in base and he hasn't seen it, how soon the Sherman is. But it's only 12-minute mark, and they've been trading off the fuel points mm. um, pretty consistently, so... I think, uh, yeah. yeah, it's the kind of thing you normally do when you, you could easily see you've been in a resource lead. But that hasn't been the case in this game. It, it, it kind of feels like a gamble mm -hmm. uh, from Jeslin. But Panzer IV will at least be the safe choice. It will come out early. I don't even think we see... Uh, it's actually Captain being teched, so... Yeah, yeah of course, because it's going to be going for a heavy cavalry company. I'm not sure that's what this should <laughs> suggest. Exactly. Uh, you know... You, you guess already. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we all knew it was coming. You're not going to pick Mechanized Doctrine. That's for Twisted Tootsie and his uh, bazooka cars. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, I mean, Jeslin, you know, it's risky from that standpoint, but he, he made the right call. Obviously, we can see that now, but he didn't see any vehicles. He didn't see Captain yet. So he knows that there was no AT gun potential. Mm. Um, he just had a good read on his opponent is really all I'm trying to get the yeah. point across is that he yeah. read it correctly and he's going to get rewarded here with a strong entry. He will. And uh, the Panzer IV at this time, 13 minutes, has a huge window uh, to, to make a difference. And maybe two minutes before we normally see with, it, with another yep. tech the Panzer IV come out. So this is actually very early. And uh, we have to see Jeslin just make full use of this right now. Uh, we don't want to see any snares. We don't want to see uh, too much damage taken from mm -hmm. playing up against the captain and the, uh, the echelons. Just pick a fights against the rifleman. Constantly uh, go around draining hands of manpower. This is perfect. No snares. Just a, just a bazooka guy. Yeah, he doesn't even want to waste the manpower there by getting off some bazooka shots. Just runs back to base. Hopefully we can see him use the supervisability. Although by the time he gets there, it's probably already done. But um, he instantly queued up the AT gun, so good awareness there by Hans. I think he was maybe looking to see if the ambulance was there, uh, which it wasn't. Hans has actually parked it. Yeah, well, uh, nice play there by Hans. Preemptively <laughs> moved it back because, you know, especially on this map, you know, you got to rely on the ambulance the entire game, and it's really, really bad to lose one middle of the game because it sets you back so much yeah. with that 250 manpower cost. Yeah. So. He made the right call there. Yeah. Paying attention. He's paying attention. Yeah. He's on top of it. Uh, I think this is actually what we wanted to see from Jeslin. You can see the map starting to uh, turn blood red again as the Spaniard <laughs> works his way up the field. And uh, he's playing it correctly. He's playing it really well. We've got uh, two pioneers. We're going to have quick repairs for Jeslin when he needs it. Yeah, it's a great play on his on his on his part when the macro side, because he knows Hans is going to be stalling for the Pershing. He's not going major. There's no stopgap Sherman. 
He just wants to get as much value out of these tier three tanks as possible before the Pershing hits the field. You know, maybe he can just totally reverse the reverse the game, get some wipes to where the Pershing's impact isn't going to be as high because there's no squads to support it. So I think overall, grand strategy wise, it's a really good call. And if you can just keep pumping out these tier three vehicles, you can get out potentially three P4s out on the field before the Pershing hits. Um, as long as he keeps up the pressure and maintains his uh, territory control, I can see that happening for sure. The question is, I mean, three P4s, is that the kind of end game uh, build you're going to want against the uh, Pershing? That being said, he's got to keep it alive, even, uh, even the one that. that he's got. Makes uh, suppressing the snare. Needs to, uh, yep, stay still. Going to get a little bit of increased accuracy. Can he get a last shot off to take down any models? No, he can't. This is a bit too close for the mortar. Yeah, that was kind of a choppy engagement. Uh, fortunately, he's close enough to base, so you can easily get those repairs in. Now, you're right on that on that comment. Oh, it looks like he's going to sweep this uh, Teller mine there. But you're definitely right on that uh, end game composition. You don't really want triple P4 versus a Pershing. Um, Are we going to see a Pershing? We got the Major. Oh, I didn't even realize. I was so busy looking just, at the Teller no, mine. I've just seen it. <laughs> like we, but but wow. Hans, this is either Hans very confident that he's going to get a fuel at the right time, which can happen. Um, Honestly, I don't know if I agree with that. You know, as boring as it as it is to watch, you know, people stall for heavy tanks historically. You know, not just in this case. You know, Tiger IS2, all that good stuff. It kind of it makes sense to do it, you know, because you're not going to get punished by putting all that fuel into a medium tank mm. that can get easily um, held down by a pack 40 uh, P4 setup. And especially with it being South Spawn Austria, they have clear vision of everything um, in terms of the core areas of the map. So I'm not sure I agree with this major tech. But I mean, you know, it is quite a while away from the Pershing CP wise anyway, so. I can see well, him I mean, getting a Jackson. We, we are, of course, falling into the trap of 100% claiming he will be playing the Pershing. That's maybe, true. Maybe there's a chance he won't. Um, it's unlikely, but maybe. There is a Telemine here, which, uh, look, it's clearly been seen. Jeslin yeah. might decide to just make use of it. I think he tried to take a cheeky shot there. Yeah, that's the problem with... Because um, we know Hans doesn't use tactical map or anything. He scrolls through the map and he clicks his units. Yeah. Um, individually he won't get that ping like you mentioned the event queue on the yeah, side yeah you know if you don't mi if you miss that there's no ping like on the tack map it'll mm. pop up you know mine spotted you'll see that um so i mean he's obviously very busy he's microing everything right now so it is understandable to miss that um it happens to everybody so hopefully he can catch on to that because his scott will get destroyed by that teller mine yeah. so for his scott's sake for his crew's sake he needs to sweep that mine I think he may have gotten it. Yeah, he has. Nice, yeah. nice, nice, nice. I mean, the, the Scott, actually, I, I do like this. I mean, with the kind of fuel income he's got plus 30 a minute, he will still be able to get to the Pershing in a fairly decent time, even if it's not out immediately. It's not like he's uh, going to be slow getting it to the field. The M8A1 Scott is... Uh, it's strong. Fun to use, but I mean, yeah, it, it can be very, very efficient at squad wiping, and it's especially good against four-man squads when they clump. Yeah, it's it's really annoying, and it's especially good on this map with how uh, short of a map it is. You know, units like this, the Pack Howie, the ISG, the Scott, they're going to be extremely effective, especially with how many shot blockers they can utilize. Um, and Hans has got the double bazooka on his rear echelon. You know, we can't see that off the unit count up top. But if you look closely, I believe I did see double bazooka. So he's going to use that um, with his captain, with his AT gun, and keep the P4 at bay. I think it's a great call, you know, now that we're seeing that in real time. He can, he can get a Jackson if he wants after or wait for the Pershing. But he's got enough AT to deal with this P4 right now. I wonder what Jeslin's gonna pick. He's got Lightning War, you know. Right now, mobile defense is obviously out of the out of the question because you know it's way too late and there's no need for it. Um, I think we're gonna see Lightning War. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, Blitzkrieg is really good. He literally oh, he just, just picked yeah. it as you said it. So you couldn't have uh, timed that better. It caught me off guard with that. I was like, how, how did you do that? Please teach me. <laughs> but uh, no, Lightning War is a good choice, and uh, you know. 
both Blitzkrieg and Lightning will have the JU87s, mm -hmm. uh, but we saw early he just wasn't upgrading his uh, Grens with the LMGs. Now at least he can pop 45 munition G43s on, which yep. are great on the move, so he can fire whilst moving. Makes him more mobile on a map like this, I think, is really important. Yeah, so, they're great. So, you know, Lightning War, great uh, choice always. Nice so rifle, mate. Nice. Beautiful. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, we were talking about uh, Jeslin really needing to get into that second game before you see him pick up into anything. And uh, we are absolutely seeing that. Uh, this is much more of an even game than we saw in the first. Yeah, he, he is behind on VPs though. Um, so him having, if he wins this, he's definitely not going to be able to have faction selection. Um, which is unfortunate, but like you said, he, he looks like he's been... Oh man, that was... <laughs> Super close. Could see that one coming. That's that was a very, very quick reaction yep. from Jeslin. Got to say, yeah, a lot of people lost to the uh, the bars there. Yeah, it's good he got out of there right away. Kind of flinch, you know, when you get hit by that when you're watching it. <laughs> well, you, you you see it coming. You, yeah. When you play the game for ages, you kind of know before the squad wipes that yep. it's gonna happen. You're like, ah, I can't stop this. Man, Jeslin's got double powerhouse available to him as soon as he hits the CP. So it looks like he's hit the ju 7 so he's got that available for when Hans dies with whatever tank he'll have at that time. And he's ready to go with the Tiger. He's been floating quite a bit. You know, he could definitely buy something here. Uh, looks like he just did. Maybe he just mass reinforced something because he was at 1,000 map power just a moment ago. Um, okay, he's putting up his Tier 2. Right, right, right. He yep, skipped that. Yep, yep. So that's that's good. You can get a pack. Uh, I Tiger like that he's saving for the Tiger, but a <laughs> thousand manpower? Yeah, I mean, a little too much. Credit, credit to Deslin. I mean, look, he's, he's, the pop cap's not like it's dangerously low. He's yeah, not it's losing pretty close. Control. It's not the worst thing in the world, mm -hmm. but people will be looking at that and thinking, oh, a thousand manpower? He's actually putting the tech down <clears throat> for the CP progression, I think. Right. That's That's smart. So he, he'll get that much oh, closer. Oh, that's a good point. That's yeah, a he'll really get that good much point. closer. So when uh, this builds, yeah, of course, the CP Yeah, he goes gained up. a little bit there. That was good. <clears throat> now he just needs to get in some engagements and bam, click it and come out yeah. on the field and see how, how much impact this is going to have. I mean, it's worth noting he's got everything he needs to make Lightning War the best thing. You've got Relief Infantry. If he gets a bit more munitions, go in with Relief Infantry so he can get some Ostrupen as the, the losses uh, mm -hmm. come on. Then you can use the JU-87s and roll in the Tiger. Yep. It would be beautiful. Uh, if we can see Lightning World played in its true glory, uh, something to potentially look forward to. And if he uses it at this point, uh, probably not worth using the JU-87s right now. Mm -mm. Uh, You'll be smart to save it, but what's really been hurting him in these engagements is that all but one of his Grens are not upgraded. And, you know, outside of supporting each other in duos, there we go, there's the baby tiger. She is. Look at that. Beautiful. Soon to be in Battlefield 5. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, we don't get to see enough of this at the moment because it's regarded as being uh, a little weaker than its former glory. But I mean, nevertheless, you never uh, you never hear this through the fog of war and go, oh no, it's just a tiger. Yeah, you, you, just... you still respect and fear it uh, when your opponent is, uh, especially when your opponent's Jezlin ruling it. <clears throat> But, uh, I mean, this is one of these tanks. It, it, it works best in support. Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. Know, it's good. The range is good. It requires a little bit of spotting. But it can get some great wipes, just like the, uh, the Pershing is going to be able to. Hans could cancel this AT gun he's queuing right now and build the Pershing. I mean, he's close regardless. He doesn't really have to. But we're going to see Battle of the Titans right here. <clears throat> and Pershing's definitely got the advantage on paper with that double shot. You know, it's a bit weaker since it got nerfed. But it's definitely something you should respect. Um, double AT gun setup, that's actually terrifying, you know, Pershing, double AT gun, bazookas, riflemen, uh, snares, and he's got, he's got indirect use of the smoke there that Jeslin doesn't in his Doctrine ability. Jeslin may just quickly discover hands laying some more mines. You can actually see Jeslin has now uh, put some minesweepers on his second squad of Pioneers. This is the push that we were looking for. JU-87s have been called in by Jeslin. Oh, is this right on. the moment? Let's have a look now. ju 87 should be immediately targeting the Pershing. These things are very strong. Oh, he's rotating too much on the side there. This is pretty close, though. That is close. That is close. Of course, there oh, are bazookas he's get out from of the there. captain. He's so careful. We get the clear on the AT gun, so... Oh, Panzer IV went down. 
somewhere off to the right side. Uh, just just over here, I believe. Uh, yeah, I mean, just didn't actually use that exactly as we were expecting. Dived a lot of units in, called in the JU-87s. It's what we like to see. And, uh, I, you know, I almost feel maybe he's oh, lucky. Oh, no. He got so lucky on the spacing there on the strafe because they were both within the arc mm -hmm. at the edge to where it targeted the ambulance and the Scott. If uh, they went I, for a single run, it would have wiped whichever one yeah. you know, was available. I think, that, I mean, this is sometimes deceptive. Oh, wow. yeah. I think that ambulance, if there was line of sight, would maybe still uh, be susceptible to that. But uh, <coughs> without line of sight, these planes are literally just going to uh, loiter and fly away. Now, yeah, here's the lull where everyone's repairing, reinforcing, waiting <laughs> for the planes to go away. So, after the storm after come, comes, <laughs> comes the calm. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, like, Jeslin is uh, doing really well in this mm -hmm. game. Uh, I think he's just made it very clear to Hans that uh, this is not going to be a walkover, a bit like the first game was. Uh, Hans, I've got to say, I really admire this, though. There's so much mine laying going on from Hans. He's just, he's ready for this uh, mm -hmm. Tiger. Tiger's the only one that's left. Panzer IV. And where was the actual... Like, right there. Yeah. There it is. A little yeah. hidden with the <clears throat> trees there. But I think it died to one of the AT guns and some bazookas. And fortunately for Hans, it doesn't appear like he lost anything outside of the team weapons. So you could just easily recruit those. Um, but it's so even on stats. Yeah, they're Even the VPs are like near even. This is a... Uh, a really, really close game. You know what I've seen Hans use, though, that I, I forgot to mention? He uses that um, combined arms tactics, I think is what it's called. Right, but one that everyone forgets yeah. about. That's uh, actually incredibly useful. And if I remember right, you get increased fire rate. So that oh. could really help in the like Tiger versus Pershing engagement. Um, Relic really did think of everything. Yeah. <laughs> to, to I think I've seen him that. use it, too, earlier. I swear I saw him use it. It's pretty expensive, but you know, in that doctrine, you're not, you aren't really using too much munitions after you've upgraded your guys with bars. Um, they're just trading blows right now. You know, Hans has the double AT gun, but he will have to utilize the armor, the HVAP rounds every time he wants to fight, because you really want to be consistently penning that Tiger. Otherwise, you know, what's the point? Good shot there from the Pershing. Once he gets that thing vetted, it's going to be a monster, just walking up, throwing hands at everything. And the what, fire gotta, rate too. He's got to be so careful getting in buildings like that with the Persian around because it can uh, track a target and fire very, very quickly. Look at that. <laughs> well, two massive nice armies left on the field. 27 minutes into the game. We've got a pretty varied army on either side. Lots of support play, mortars, AT guns, plenty of infantry. Plenty of abilities. Both players are starting to stack the munitions. What I think is going to be another series of great pushes or uh, defensive plays. Yeah. But, uh, Jeslin's close to his next strafe as well. He's replacing his Panzer IV. He's going to be looking for another opportunity to push here, but hopefully he's he's going to be aware of these mines that Hans is put, putting down. He noticed one rifleman putting it down earlier before he made his push, so he's got to be really careful with his Tiger. He's got one Pioneer with the sweepers on, so just got to really pick the right spot to push in. Oh, and right here, he's got no sweeper, so anything goes in terms of mines. I haven't seen the Scott for a second here. Is it? Is it like idle somewhere? Uh, or? Yeah, it's actually back in the base at the moment, so... I think maybe he was using it to repair the Pershing earlier and he forgot to put the crew back in or something. I, I missed that. Possible. Yeah, that's what he has been doing. Oh, nice. He's using the combined tactics right here. It, but, uh, not going to help with the uh, Persian team. Really, these need to be near vehicles to benefit from it. Right. So uh, you they can see, I don't think they're actually anything. getting any of that, that bonus at the moment. But you can see here that these infantry are. So Hans, although using the ability, very impressive that he remembered. Uh, <laughs> Wasn't very effective. It's not very effective. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's Scott and Base, Pershing. Oh. Nice shots there, though. 300 points remaining. Still pretty even on VPs. Camera down. This AT gun. Uh, if this AT gun can just get a down. little bit more veterancy, it'll be very, very useful with a uh, target weak point. Yeah. Oh, it looks like the scum may go down if he targets it. Nice, he <laughs> dodged it. Uh, 
there's so much going on. Of course, if we can just have a little bit of line of sight, even by some grenadiers, Jeslin needs to uh, make the most of this ability when he does yeah. pull it down, and I think that's why he's prepared to take the hands of four in at the moment. Um, but without line of sight, look at this, the Pershing is actually still well in there. Yeah, luckily for Hans, there's nothing to give Jeslin vision, so unless, you know, you retarget, the planes retarget the tank, like, from a pintle, which the Pershing doesn't have, you should be fine, as long as your opponent doesn't have vision, which goes to show that it was a pretty poor usage of the strafe from Jeslin, because yeah. there was no follow-up. He got a little too excited, he saw the two vehicles um, maneuvering about, and he just clicked it and dropped it, you know, which is understandable in the moment, but that was basically a waste of 200 munitions. Uh, I would agree. No, I'd say that uh, the usage wasn't good. Hans getting a bit ballsy here. Gonna go cause some chaos uh, as Jeslin is uh, on the retreat. He can just gets some shots off. Nearly takes down the Panzer IV with the captain. Tiger tries to land a shot off. Big shot from Big the shot. Panzer IV on the retreat. But uh, this is really important for Hans to just uh, you know attack what was a solid front line from Jeslin, shake things up a little bit. And uh, that's going to give him time to get a good position of his own on the map. You see him is setting up his position uh, AT guns now. And uh, that's a wide arc of fire. Really, really good. Hans' placement today has been on point. Oh, yeah, that's a great spot. It covers the middle. Oh, man. That mortar just obliterated that rifleman. Rest in peace. Uh, but, yeah, that rest, AT... Rest in pieces. <laughs> right, that's more <laughs> literal weight. <laughs> but, as you, if you notice there, his HVAP was on cooldown, and he's been using a lot of his munitions, so... Good usage there of his abilities. Um, Is this a fake by the uh, Major? Do you think it's actually artillery? His hand's trying to I be cheeky there. I think it's a fake, because he didn't have much munition. And the fake is super cheap. I think it's like 20, 25 maybe. I don't remember, because you don't really use it too much. But that was definitely a fake, and Jeslin either didn't notice, or he's like, yeah, I don't, I don't believe you. <laughs> It's still nice to, to just use the yeah. ability, you know, like, like, I like yeah, cool. that. Cool. Oh. fake barrage. The Mage is a cool unit. For that no, reason. it is. It's way more useful now than before, where it was just a forward retreat guy where you park him around and yeah. maybe use yeah. the recon plane here and there. But he's actually worth keeping alive now, which is good. Wow, this Tiger. You know, the funny thing with the Tiger is that when you first bring it out, it's not that great. I think we can all agree. Mm -hmm. But I mean, as this thing does get veterancy, you know, Maybe hard to get the veterans even. It does become very, very efficient. Vet um, three, it's a monster. Vet three is a, is a monster. It comes a tiger ace without the special, without the special golden camo that yeah. uh, you definitely <laughs> earned for sitting in your base and building up 800 man. Uh, <laughs> let's not get onto that discussion. Some yeah, strong feelings. Save about that for another day. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, see, uh, there's a lot. I, I like the kind of respect that's going on here between the tiger and the Pershing because they're they're not engaged. I don't. You know, they're not engaging each other head to head and diving. In fact, they're just trying to reach Vet 3. I think, you know, who can hit it first? Yeah, it's like who they're can, talking yeah. the game, like, hey, <laughs> let's play to the sides, see who gets Vet 3 first and duke it out. It's a gentleman's war. It <laughs> absolutely is a gentleman's war. They're just like, look, we're just going to scrim, skirmishes, left, right, left, right, as Jeslin would call it, uh, tennis. And, um, and then we'll go in with something epic. Yeah, uh, jokes aside, um, it really shows how much respect is being paid between both players, you know? They know that each side is loaded with their composition. You're practically maxed out on both sides, and one mistake in this big engagement, it's game over. So they're really looking for their opportunity here to make their make their fight work for them. So I can definitely respect the slow slowdown, because nobody wants to be the one to initiate it if they're not ready, so. Yeah. It's worth noting that uh, Jezelin really has no opportunities to change his build now. He's 93 pop cap, so really he's got to commit to what he's got and use it well. Uh, you know, bank up and use the abilities from his commander. Hans, you know, probably still has room uh, for a little. And of course, USF can break the pop cap by hopping out of the vehicles right, that they've got. Right. Uh, so there is always that opportunity for Hans to get a little bit more on the field in terms yeah, a of a little bit more value. I'd like yeah. to see him do that and get a get a Jackson out. That but yeah, that would be. But yeah, if this Pershing gets Vet 3 right here, I think if it goes the really, really long game, like we're talking like 50 minute, one hour games, the Pershing's gonna gonna definitely win the white war. Because it's gonna it's gonna be shooting super fast, super accurate. It's gonna be throwing those nades that we were talking about earlier. 
So I think Jeslin is the one that needs to apply the pressure. And Hans is making it super hard for him. He's always with these hit and run attacks with these bazookas. He's been doing it this whole time that we've been talking. He's walking around, shoot double bazooka, walk away, shoot again, retreat. And with the Aussie repair speed, you know, Vet 1 piles, it's going to be taking a while. Pack shot was uh, fantastic. Yeah. Linked off max range, which does happen with the Pershing. It's got better armor. Oh, that guy just got flung into the air. <laughs> That scared his homies away. <coughs> oh, this they is thought. smart from Jezlin. He's actually taken Minesweepers to the left and uh, negated a lot of the snare potential that Hans had uh, laid as traps. It's really good. I mean, I, I mm -hmm. really, really like, um, you know, they're actually players, they're playing very intelligently. Look at the range that's on this Tiger. This is the benefit of the Tiger. Uh, this is why it's, you, know, you really can't be running around with it at the front, but if you're going to push up with it, some infantry at the front, um, you know, you really do get the max uh, benefit of it. It's, it's, at this stage, you know, okay at range. Yeah, it got that buff a <laughs> while back where I think it gave it 10 extra range and it really shows how beneficial it has been uh, this game because he's just been firing away without any repercussion. He hasn't moved, Hans hasn't moved up his AT guns to respond. His Pershing's kind of hanging back a little bit. Nino's getting a bit of repairs. Um, Tiger's right about to hit Vet 2 actually. Just one hit away. I think it gets the movement speed of it too. I can't remember exactly. Uh, we can have a look actually. So greater accuracy and range is that's veteran C2, yeah, which better. is, I think that's the one that you want. And then this is the one with the rate of firing uh, yes. at vet three. And that's where we get uh, a seriously strong unit uh, to support the austere army on the front lines. Uh, interestingly, I mean, a map like Feynmanville, very, very thin from base to base. And you just see these AT gun positions, USF AT gun, the range is huge. Um, you know, penetration a little lower. And they've got access to the, uh, the name of yep. yeah, Armor piercing discarding sub rounds. <laughs> yeah, it even sounds scary. It sounds like it should be in the UKF. Uh, <laughs> 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 but, uh, look at how it's doing, 19 kills, so bad by any means. Yeah, he's been pushing him back quite a bit here and there. Every single engagement, he's gaining a bit of ground, and he's fighting right outside of Jeslin's base. This double AT gun setup has been a nightmare for mm. Jeslin. Like, they're both, like you said, they're covering a huge amount of ground. Yeah. As soon as the Tiger rears its head to take a shot off, it's getting the return fire now that Hans has moved up. Um, this other AT gun's a little bit back, but he's protecting the flank in case that P4 comes around to harass his Scott. Um, so it's really, really good. Um, play here by Hans with his composition. He's really utilizing it well instead of just like taking everything middle and having to rotate it as the threat comes. Mm. He's ready for it. Oh, I like this. Smoke being dropped by Jeslin. That's going to stop the AT gun from uh, causing trouble when the Tiger comes back onto the field. The smoke's going to be, I think, a really, really important element of, of how this game proceeds. Uh, smoke in the right place, you know, forcing players mm -hmm. to use a, a ground attack with the AT guns because they won't be able to track automatically. Right. It's just going to be so important to uh, to tip that advantage. Nice shot there from the pack. Almost gets the Faust off. Gave up, gave up some of his ground there. He's backing up. Um, I think it was to reinforce because he retreated quite a bit of his infantry. Ooh. Trading blows there. Two veterans wow. all around. That was a nice connection there from the AT gun. I don't even know if that was a... Oh, this is smart from Jeslin. He's getting a triple cap against Hans. And a uh, triple cap whilst Hans is maybe not being as aggressive as he could be right now. He's going to uh, take a lot of VPs away from Hans. He's already slightly lower than Jeslin. You know what we should... If, if, if Hans isn't going to hop out of his crew and get a Jackson or something, he needs to get the AA half track because Jeslin mm. is almost <laughs> at double JU87. You know, he's going to be dropping that next time there's a big engagement. So Hans needs to get ready for that, either through getting AA. Even M20 could do some AA because, you know... I mean, this, this would be the time go. to use it as well because Hans is actually back in the base and the radius would pretty much cover everything. Whereas, uh, at least if Hans is in the middle of the field, that's a huge oh, wow. hit from the Pershing! Wipes out the Pioneer. Four Pioneers repairing! Obliterated. Oh, wow. That, that hurts a lot. Yeah. yeah. There's no way to get those guys back and with their veterancy, so... It's gonna take that much longer to repair your tanks. 
I mean, I didn't. I, were they? They weren't veteran C3 or anything, were they? Because vet three, they. Uh, I think they don't take as much damage. Uh, right. Whilst under fire. Exactly. Um, while they're repairing. But I think they they were just un not veteran C3. Yeah, it was just the Pershing being the Pershing while they're repairing. <laughs> just Pershing. Just look away and then minus one <clears throat> squad. You know, I think, uh, honestly speaking, if Jezlin does go in uh, full lightning war and uh, try and use the J87s, I'd say he doesn't need to right now. It might be a gamble that is unnecessary because he's holding the front lines very well. Yeah, you're right. He's stabilized it very well now. His mortar is doing a lot of work, taking off models here and there. Um, oh, this is smart. AT nice. gun gets the, the first the shot with the bazooka and the AT gun. This might actually, this is gonna die. I think so. Might have range from the AT gun. Uh, no, not that long. But uh, hands. Finish that. Oh, oh almost double. <laughs> I think it did a little bit of uh, deflect damage, but it's still not gonna get away. I hope. Okay, good. Nice pickup by Hans there. Jezen was looking for that critical mass on the double P4, but looks like this engagement in the middle is picking up. Both heavies trading blows. J87 is being dropped down. This Pershing is quarter away from death. Oh, oh this is, this is gonna no be way. it! Oh. Oh. oh! He dropped the smoke to come oh. out. Oh, he got it anyway! It. He gets it from off map! It's outside the oh, circle, but it was no. tracked while it was in the circle. Vet 3. Vet 3 Pershing is down. What a play from Jeslin. Lightning War at its finest. Executed perfectly. Hands now has to bank a little more manpower to get that unit back on the field, but oh my, my word. That was really well played by Jeslin. He timed the JU87 drop well to where he placed it a little bit behind the Pershing as it was retreating, so it gave him that extra space to come in with the straight, and I think that's exactly what caused, yeah. the, caused the kill shot. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm pretty Hans sure it was tracked, tracked on the edge of the, right, the circle. Right. But beautiful. I mean, that Tiger, look at it. Look how close that is. To being Tiger Ace. And now Hans is gonna get reset on his Pershing once he actually gets it out, but if he starts saving for it now, he's gonna forego reinforcing his captain, that rifleman to full. Um, this is gonna give Jeslin a lot of space mm. to take the map and triple cap him. Yeah. Yeah, what you said earlier, by the way, was absolutely bang on as a point, is that, you know, from the Lieutenant, you do get the uh, AA half-track, mm -hmm. which would just deal with the JU-87 so efficiently. Uh, if they are going to be causing problems like that, it will be a worthwhile investment uh, for hands, because I mean, he doesn't really know it, but Jesmyn's just banking this manpower. Uh, sorry, uh, munitions. Uh, crazy game so far. That Tiger is almost repaired. Hands about to dive on the central VP plenty of veterancy on all of these units and actually the games in a lot of the series today we've just seen so much veterancy flying around it's a perfect example of how this game is supposed to be played you know get those units strong over time keep them alive and you'll get rewarded absolutely and honestly this best company of heroes to uh, like tournament player i've ever seen across any of the tournaments in, in this game yeah it's really so high level A tiger. Fed three any second now. Just needs to connect one good shot. Looks like this one right here, maybe. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there <laughs> it, is. it took the shot and vetted. <laughs> the little bit of veteran team get from eating hits. Ooh, oh, look at these hits coming in. This tiger needs to get out of there. Yeah, he doesn't want really to work. Good thing Hans doesn't have. Uh... Oh. I think he just blew up the pack, right? He did, yeah, he just blew up the pack gun. Fortunately, though, this is the pack gun with the two-star veteran C. Target weak point is what we want to see. That right. would really, really allow the Tiger to shred armor. Um, but it's all about, you know, popping the smoke on the AZ guns, uh, getting that stun off however possible, and uh, giving that uh, final blow. The Tiger can just sit back, cover the central VP from the base, Hans is also down to one rifleman. He just lost one. We missed that during that. No, no, he lost lost it on the retreat. I think that was the one that came oh. from here. Yeah, and uh, so we did catch. That's the model that, that died. Oh, right, right, right. That's a uh, nice catch. I didn't notice. Is so. it very? Uh, oh, what's going on with uh, this poor grenadier stuck in, in the, the uh, treads? <laughs> yeah. That's a little <laughs> brutal. It's a little brutal. <laughs> that guy's having a bad day. Yeah. yeah that's, uh, I hope he couldn't feel that. Already dead. <laughs> oh, oh he's got a dangerous, dangerous, house dangerous, here. dangerous. Oh, oh, the did a little bit of Get out, Jeslin. Get out. 
Thank goodness. That's the worst thing, losing dudes, full dudes in the house because it collapses. And it really shouldn't be happening too much at this level. One shot penetration. Let's have a look at the reload time on Vet 3 now. Fires again. Wow, huge that was quick. Hit. It is quick. This is now a fast tank. The range is huge. All it needs is sight. It's the only thing we need. On that. Nice. Oh, he got he nades. Nice smoke usage there. Yeah, of course, uh, yeah, Jeslin's going to be able to ground attack through it yeah. with great it's, efficiency. Yeah, it wasn't really going to come out too much there. I think he just, just threw it out there to show that he's he's got him. Well, this is dangerous, though, actually. Bet 3 AT gun. Jeslin makes the right decision to get out of there. And uh, say what you want about the USF AT gun, uh, you know, Veteran 3 is putting in the work. Yeah, it's penetrating often. Nice pushback by Hans here. You know, he's he's down on the pop cop now, but he's bringing the pain in. That, those AT guns are definitely keeping him in the game with that Vet 3 Tiger. The Pershing's gotten a lot of hits on the Tiger. It's recouping that veterancy. Um, you know, there's plenty of VPs to work with. You know, 145 isn't too much, but it's enough to where you can you can get that, those resets. Yes, he used it. Nice. I was hoping he was going to use it a little earlier than that. Jeslin, has he taken the bait? Oh, it's actually a real one! Oh! Oh, oh my gosh, that was really good. Good call by Those Jeslin there. A little bit more to the center. See, given hands earlier, I probably would have stayed, so Jeslin's uh, a bit more clued up there than I would have been. Good, uh, smart gameplay. Here's the uh, Tiger 6, and uh, just healed, repaired again. 35 kills currently. Vet 3 pack gun 2, an essential unit in Jeslin's arsenal right now. He's got to get out of that red cover though, you know, even though it's not under threat just yet, all it takes is one bar rifleman to walk up and evaporate that health. Yeah, look at that, he's already knocked a model off, he's pulling it back, which is good. Um, but you really need to be careful with your vetted pack like that, because this is definitely a spot you don't want to lose it in. Oh, he needs to get out of the scotch <laughs> Scaring me. Tiger. Oh wow. I don't think he's maybe consider this brave to set it up here because you don't want to lose Vet 3 at any point. No, yeah. There isn't anything around to snare. I'd say he's probably just given up Vet 3 on his oh AT my gun. Oh gosh, this AT gun is freaking destroying that Tiger. If the JU 87s popped again. Yeah, defensive use there. Oh, knocks off so much health from that Pershing. Gotta pull back for sure. I think Hans needs to answer the uh, the anti-air question that's on the field at the moment. Yeah, he can't afford to just give up every time, you know, give up a fight every time those planes come down. He's got to have something to fight back. And he, he literally has absolutely nothing. There's no pintle from any of his tanks. Um, there's no light vehicle like the M20 or the AA half track. He's basically just giving up, you know, whenever those planes get dropped, which is not something you want to do when you're down to 145 VPs. Repair times are going to be fairly long. You, yep. also, you need those bazookas on the echelons uh, hitting front lines. Slowly, slowly over time, actually. I think we're seeing austere units just getting uh, more and more wins and engagements. Uh, grenades are definitely something that could change that. Some smart grenade play from hands uh, could be just what is needed. But Jezelyn uh, attacking the VPs over and over. What a game, really, what a game. 50 minutes in, Ooh. a huge shot from the Tiger. That was a nasty one. I mean, this has been a crazy tournament. We're looking at, you know, helping hands who 2-0 Dev M in the losers right? bracket. Still, Fantastic. Super impressive. Yeah, and then, you know, Jeslin who, uh, who was seeded very low, like I think lowest seed in yep, this tournament. Uh, you know, and, and he's just done so well. Uh, it's just been such a pleasure to watch. And he's got history, you know, this is what's nice about oh, casting yeah. a player like this. We were talking about, like, the KOTU god for two years at the start of the game. Yep. No one was better than Jeslin. And he has so many wins under his belt. If you, like I said earlier, if you go to his Twitch channel right now, I think it's Jeslin OP. Yeah. You look at his accomplishments, <laughs> yeah. you go down, you scroll down, the list is very long. This yeah. guy is eternal when it comes to Company Heroes. Yeah. So... He's being 8th seed, like he said in the interviews when we started the event, 
You know, he said it doesn't matter if I'm seed eight. I mm -hmm. to win this, you have to be everybody. Yeah. So and he's showing it right now. He's he's coming back and he looks like he's gonna clench this game too. Yeah, he, he had the best mentality out out of anyone. But uh, wow, you don't see this very often. Veteran C3 Tiger, the Pershing has managed to pick up two stars and uh, is a whole is bar away from the third. It's still the Tiger that has that dominance at the moment. Let's look at the vision range. I mean, it's not It's not great. It's not great. You do need uh, stuff to spot. But when oh it does hit, God. when it hits, it hits hard. Oh, man, that guy. It was just a deletion. Like, he never yeah. existed. It was... We want to see target weak point here. This is a perfect opportunity. Jeslin, I think, maybe missed a good chance. Oh, no! What oh, did we see in the house man. there? And it was his LMG. Or, wait, what? That was the... Was no! That would have been the captain. That would have been the captain in the right, house. Right, <laughs> My word. JU-87's coming for the M1, uh, MAA-1 Scott. This is a great chance now for the Tiger and the Panzer IV to push right up into the base. I don't believe there are any mines. Helping Hands is going for a Jackson because I think he realizes the severity of this situation. Here's oh, the Tiger. Man, this Tiger's going to go in on this base. These AT guns have been pretty good at keeping the Tiger away for a lot of this game, but uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. This AT gun is just not having it. He's not going down. No, keeping Hans, uh, keeping Hans alive here without getting base rushed. Pulled it back to reinforce it. Good job there. Definitely needs to keep those vetted. Can't get them decrewed there. Oh, oh my oh, goodness, oh, oh, oh. that is a dead lieutenant. Do you oh know what? my god. Helping Hans has fallen into the trap of stalling for the Pershing, but he's actually just been fooled by the austere counter to it, stalling for Tiger. The tiger, look at it, man. This yeah. thing is beautiful. I feel like Jeslin has just beaten him with his own strategy. He's uh, taken off Helping Hands' his shoe and given him a good whacking. Looks like he will get a Pioneer in return. You know, isn't the best pickup, but it is something. Um, I think that's good, though. Yeah, he it needs helps it with the repair the speeds, for sure. I take it back. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is just his point. Helping Hands, desperate for VPs now. He's about to hit 50. Uh, he's got oh. so much work to do. The Jackson could be a great uh, play here, well. but it's all about timing. Is this Pershing almost bed three? No, right? <laughs> it's, I think, uh, uh, it's half oh, okay. halfway there. Yeah. Man, he needed this Jackson a year ago. <laughs> he could have gotten it at one point. He was floating a bit. He just had to do the pop cap thing by uh, hopping out of his Scott. Um, or slash might a, ambulance. Might be a good idea for him to get out of the Scott and put give the three. Right. Yeah. Absolutely, you're absolutely right. Give that Jackson the potential to use his HVAP rounds and put this Tiger to Tiger to rest. I never thought I'd see the day where the uh, Pershing wasn't the dominant uh, vetted vehicle on the field. Oh, looks like it's about to go down too. Oh, it's getting blocked off by the Scott a little bit. He's got to rotate. Good use of the smoke there to prevent any potential follow-up attack ground RNG shot. Both heavy tanks relatively low. Wow, this is, uh, oh, this Pershing is going in right now with no health. I think he's in the arc of that. Picks up the P4. That's a great move by Hans. Very nice. He needs to be playing like that at the moment. The Jackson is coming in for a flank. This could be a dive. It could be the dive that we need to see from Hans in oh order my. to deal with this unit. There we go. Look I'm at this. See this what a play. Oh, but the fire rate of the Tiger is... Oh, will he get the last shot off? Oh. No! <laughs> oh. The Bet 3 Tiger's fire rate prevents the Jackson from getting that shot off. And Hans is forced to retreat now with that Pershing. That was so close. He, he played the exact right thing that he should have done. Uh, and just wasn't rewarded for it. But uh, Veteran C3 is fearsome. That's oh, what this game yeah. is about. It's all about getting the benefits of veterancy. It changes these units entirely. Uh, what a great example of that. But That Hans, was so close. It was. That could have been just the win right there for Hans to just come back. Yeah. You know, I mean, doesn't want to have plenty of time to come back with 274 VPs, but that would have been definitely his moment. Oh, look at this nade attempt. He's nice. trying to be cocky. And he throw always does those. <laughs> every, you can count on Hods doing those every time, which is good. You want to do those. You can get that, that cheeky wipe. Go for it. Hans went for the M4 Sherman, actually. Just not even going to bother with the rebuilding a Jackson. 
entirely sure how I feel about that. I've got to say though, the Scott has done very well in this game. I think it's been very annoying at best. Constantly taking down that occasional model. And I wonder if that, that crew swap you were talking about would have mattered in that dive. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. It might have been the difference that he needed. Well, actually, I think if you use the ability, does it reset reload? Can you use it immediately afterwards? Actually, I don't think so. Right, okay. Because I mean, but if it did, that would be the... the definitely. I need to check the veterancy, because I'm not sure if a Vet 3 Scott would be enough to give us a Vet 2 Jackson. I have to check that, but potential, potential difference. Uh, Sherman's out on the field. Looks like he's swapped it to uh, HE rounds. He's got to put that uh, work in. With Fury the here on the right-hand side. <laughs> Some uh, film recreation. I can just sense the exhaustion hitting in. This is almost one hour. This back and forth slugfest. But they're still performing really well. These yeah, and you know what? Like, this. this this looks like it will go to a game three, and these players absolutely deserve a break if it does. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, uh, the AT gun does have a little bit of a line of sight there. JU-87s have been called oh, down again. this person is a pixel away from dying. Has it tracked it? Did it track I that I think one? it's going for the Sherman, yeah. The Sherman looks like it's going to die, though. Oh, just gets it at the last end of that strafe. This uh, MAA-1 also needs to be careful. Does it get picked up on the retreat? Major is going to go down. The enemy is attempting to steal our sector. <clears throat> Did Hans ever cap that top? Territory point? Did, did Jeslin just decap that? I just noticed that it's been white for a while. I mean, that's a little side note to the, what's about to happen, but just noticed that. Say that again, sir. Obviously. Too busy trying to get that. <laughs> oh, um, that territory point on the top right, did Hans ever <laughs> cap that? Know, or was it, was it just decapped? Because that would make a huge difference for mm. 56 minutes of income. Wow, that's a good point. Hope. I hope, hope he did. Hopefully. <laughs> I'm sure he did. It's just been decapped now. Um, looks like Jeslin's going in for the triple cap now to seal the game. Hans is holding on to dear life. He's he's preoccupied at base with his rear echelon. He's actually built two extra ones. The second one's in queue. Third one's in queue, actually. He's utilizing the crew, which is smart. You know, this is the only way to get that decapped. Um, there's nothing nearby for Jeslin to respond with, so he can definitely at least get the neutralize there before something heads over. Um, might buy him a few more seconds. Gotta get these engineers repairing that tiger. Actually, in game one, do we remember how many VPs were won? Is it, did he win with 400 and... Hans Jeslin, won. yeah, Hans won with like 420, something like that, so there's no way that Hans won't have the faction selection. And uh, for game three, what map we would be going to? I forgot the the way it works. It goes to the top one, right? Uh, I think it might be. Um, oh no, sorry. Crossroads. Yeah, I think it's crossroads. Because it's usually game three's fame and bill, because everyone picks yeah, crossroads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we kind of switched it up in this sense. Oh, doesn't want to start losing these grenades. He's just keeping them in the VP. Yeah, he, he doesn't want no any for him chance. to do this. Like he's got plenty of time to decap it. No need to throw away the grand one. They only have two left. What an ending scene. Vet 3 Pershing. Vet 3 Tiger. Oh no, never mind. <laughs> US and Austin competing for this VP in the center. What the desperation. Last, what a last scene. <laughs> there, there's those nades we were talking about. Yep. Yeah, and Hans yeah, is, still, is still giving it. He still is trying to make this work. Oh, I, I, nice job there by Jeslin. Yeah, I misspoke there. He, he definitely played that the right way. Come on. Looks there's, like there's a second plane to come in. Oh, <laughs> we're not going to get treated to it. What a game. What a fantastic game. GG. It is now 1-1 in this series. Good game. All right, we are back. What a fantastic game two in that series. And uh, I don't know about you, but I wasn't expecting it to be anything like that after game one. That was, I think, the best game, actually, really? so far. 
It's a, it's a, it's really close between that one and the one we saw with Love Ness and Talisman. Yeah, yeah. On Crossroads, it's yeah. between those two. That was a really good game. I'm really impressed with Jeslin's ability to fight back and forth mm, as consistently mm. as he did. Uh, he really, you, he really took advantage of that heavy tank engagement we had where Hans lost his first Pershing. And he just controlled the game after that. Yeah, I, that, that was, um, <clears throat> like I say, I think there were definite flaws from hands there yep. in the a aircraft just reigned supreme. And it's like, if that happens once, okay, you know, right. if it happens twice, consider anti-aircraft. It happens three times and you've already lost your vet three purchase. Like Maybe some anti-air yep. is, uh, is needed, but it's just, uh, uh, what an incredible game. Both of them gave it absolutely everything uh, in that match. And we are lucky enough to have a third game coming yes. up uh, very shortly. I think it's the right thing to do to give the players a little bit of a break uh, before we get into that. Um, yeah, they put their souls into that one. They need a few minutes. Um, yeah. So do we, yeah. I think. Uh, I think <laughs> we definitely also need a few minutes because uh, it's just so grueling sometimes, isn't it, watching yeah. that? But absolute pleasure. I would actually say that's my game of the tournament so far. Just yep. nice to see the Tiger, nice to see, do you know what I mean, that, that kind of combination. It was Bringing a good it back. composition. I, like, I'm... It may not show it like facial expression wise, but I'm really <laughs> impressed with that game from both I'm, sides. I'm really the only thing happy <laughs> was the best game I've ever cast. <laughs> ever. Amazing. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The only thing, like you said, that really to criticize Hans on was the AA. Mm. Not having the AA. Like, there wasn't even anything. You know, usually mm. when you have a Sherman or something, you have that 50 cal or Pintle. Mm that can help you shooting things help with shooting those planes down but you can't mm. you can't just give it away you know every time someone drops a skill plane you have to have something to counter it yeah and we saw yeah. that earlier you know even building something as small as like a 222 i think yeah. we saw love nest do that you know he didn't yeah. have dedicated aa but he put something out so even like an m20 would have helped there but other than that that was extraordinary yeah. almost one hour on famineville Yep, and uh, 58 minutes, 52 seconds to be precise. Mm -hmm. And uh, game three, Hans is going to have a uh, faction selection, I think. He's, yes. Yeah, he's going to have the yes. faction selection, and uh, Jeslin will be on the counter pick. I think it'll be interesting to see what Hans picks because he's won as Axis, but he seems to be playing very well with USF. Does he want another go at that? I think he's going to go Astrupin. Really? Yeah. Okay. He, he played that <clears throat> game one really, really well. Mm. If he just copies that, and just stays the course. I think I think he'll come out on top. But you know, actually, do you know I what? You, you root hands, I'll root Jeslin, and we'll we'll kind of play it off. We make a bet. And uh, yeah, I actually just forgot that it's not on Famineville anymore. Uh, so okay. never mind. I take it back. <laughs> anyway, it. plenty to speculate on. We hope you guys are doing the same, and of course, enjoying the show. Thank you so much. Uh, nearly fifteen hundred viewers here. Uh, to celebrate this amazing Company of Heroes 2 uh, live event. Uh, we should probably get uh, a live audience view at some point so you can For see sure. everybody. We'll do that actually when the next game is going on. And uh, later on, if we can, we'll try and integrate some players, uh, player cams for the finals, which might be interesting. That would be course, sweet. Everybody's here. Everyone's having a great time. Um, so, yeah, we'll be taking a short break and we'll be back around five to ten minutes after the players are done cooling off. And it'll be the third game of Jeslin versus Helping Hands in the loser's bracket. Can't wait. See you shortly.
Hello everybody and welcome to our third game of this incredible series. After winning game two with a Vet3 Tiger playing amazingly as Oster, this time playing on the south side of Crossroads as the Soviet unit, it is Jezilin. And Mr. Hans here up in the north, he's elected to select uh, Ostir playing on north side of Crossroads. He's already locked in Ostrupin. He's been super, super consistent this tournament, and he's looking to knock Jeslin out and proceed to the loser bracket finals for a shot at the grand finals. Let's yeah, let's get uh, to it. Absolutely. I just saw a little uh, clip there of the uh, crowds cheering their players on. Everyone's having a great time here. It's been such a nice event. It's like a giant sleepover. <laughs> Everyone's out there just getting cozy with loads of snacks and uh, all been really good fun. Uh, massive thank you to everybody who has uh, you know donated, made this happen, uh, you've turned up from all over the world just to support this event, you included. Um, it's so fantastic. But uh, yeah, let's focus on this game because what a game three we have. Game two is 58 minutes long uh, with just veteran C3 everywhere. Uh, now we have two players who are, as you rightly said, they're just going to be giving it everything. And uh, correctly predicted from you, actually, at the end of the last game, uh, helping hands with his Ostrupen strategy is Ostir. Got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> you don't give yourself enough credit, Momo. Uh, that was the exact right call. Of course, Helping Hands was going to use this. This is his most comfortable um, strategy that he's got for Ostir. Yep. And uh, he's threatened by Jeslin. And, uh, clearly respects Jeslin to use it. It just goes to show how comfortable he is with this strategy. Um, he's employed it every single time this tournament. I don't think he's played OKW once. And, you know, it just works for him. The 2-5-1 rush really complements the amount of map control that you can get with Ostrup in early game. And the way he uses it, which is even more important, is what makes it work for him. Just for anyone that uh, doesn't know, maybe wasn't watching the uh, earlier game in the series, benefit of Helping Hand's strategy here is to use the Ostrupen, which are quick on the field, cheap to reinforce, and he's gonna skip his tier one, go straight to tier two, and uh, build, as uh, Momo said there, the 2-5-1. Get flame projectors, it's gonna be so good against the uh, Soviet Union. Put so much pressure on Jeslin to come up with an early answer to this strategy. Yeah, he's, he's already started out super aggressive as he should with Ostrupin. He's already fighting on the cutoff down in the south. He's forced off almost all of Jeslin's army here. He's taking that territory up in the north, capturing the VP, starting the bleed, and he's gonna cut off this fuel that Jeslin has in just a moment. So it's actually a really good start from Hans here. He's got consistent income. And you know, actually with this map, there's more income than any other ma 1v1 map. Right. So right. that 2 5 1 <clears throat> rush is going to come out that much quicker. That's a really interesting point. So this this is the map for Hans's strategy, uh, which is uh, fantastic. I mean, Jeslin, we saw this last time, right? So Jeslin uh, isn't going to go for Armored Assault. He knows. You don't ever need Radio Interceptor because you kind of <laughs> know with Hans uh, he's going to play this strategy today. I think we've seen it enough to know that. Uh, it is coming, and look at that already. There's the uh, tier two. It's nearly uh, built uh, just under four minutes. It's so fast. And uh, I, I'm guessing, I mean, what options do we have from Jeslin? Last time he used uh, guard, rifle. guard rifle, brought mm -hmm. the guards out immediately, but it didn't work. Mm -mm. Uh, he stalled. So do we see something different this time, or does he try and work the same strategy better? Well, he'd have to be insane, right? Because it didn't work. <laughs> so I honestly think this time, he'll go tier two. I thought he was going to do it the first time around, but this map is very good for AT guns. It's nice and open. There aren't that many shot blockers. Um, it's much easier to defend in terms of the cutoffs. You know, it's right outside your base. Mm. I think if he wants to counter this half track, he's got to go AT gun plus 18 eights. So look at that, four minutes and a half. It's already queuing up. He has the munitions to get it. Even with that tier two in mind, this is, going to be devastating uh, it is it's 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 a very tough unit to play against at this stage in the game i'll be interested to see what jeslin goes for um again this is just really important it's like he's got the conscripts will he go for 18 aids try and rush him with that is he going to go for a commander selection early pick guards will he go for the tier two like you predict 
uh, there are options available. Um, it's just how to hit the right one. And uh, what is crucial though? I really like this. Instead of using Molotovs like he did in the previous game, he's got the flamethrower upgrade on the engineers. Uh, that's going to be the uh, the cover clearing tool to get rid of the Ostrupen. And uh, we're just waiting for that uh, flamethrower pop. Yeah, his flamethrower got forced off, but I think it was a better call than Molotovs at this point with only three conscripts. He that's really, really there. needs to get something out because this flame flame warfare is already ready. It's just a moment away from proccing. And that's going to mean the entire map for Hans. I hope Jeslin's... There we go. There's the tier two I want to see. He's got the manpower ready for it as well. He's pulled back his forces. Just I just this love one it. Guy left, it yeah. th these two players play smart with each other. Uh, they're kind of like old friends, old foes. Mm -hmm. uh, but th they don't get sucked into the mind games. They're quite calm about this. Um, you know, they're able to spot it. And, and they're not lying to each other. I think that's right. the, the nice thing. Uh, you know, Hans isn't doing anything sneaky. He's just right. like, look, we're going to play this. We're going to go and match I'm going to tell you what I've got. You're going to tell me what you've got. And uh, we're going to play it out to the best. And uh, it's all just good decision making. Two great strategists uh, from the Company Heroes 2 franchise. The Company Heroes franchise. Yeah, no mind games here. He knows his strategy. He knows it works. He won with it game one. He's been win winning with it all throughout the tournament. So from his perspective, there's no reason to change it which makes total sense. This gun is out now. Um, he's desperately trying to cap this cutoff here, even though this fuel's been taken away from him. <coughs> he's got the left side, which is good. He's still bringing in that income. He just needs to make the space to have that this gun set up without having to take too many losses here while he waits for it. Interesting to point out, he ha has gone for AT grenades on the conscripts, and uh, he just needs good, to good. maybe flank around, catch it mm -hmm. whilst it's uh, moving back and retreating. Uh, at the very least, we know that the... Uh, in the last game, we didn't really get the answer to the, the half track. He's, you know, messing around, skipping tears, right. everything. And, and this time, uh, this time he's gone for it. The odd map at the moment. Let's just have a look at the tactical map. You see... It's pretty <coughs> split. It's, a, it's a <laughs> no VP here, but fuel, blue VP, red fuel. It's, what, what on earth is going on there? I think we just see a telemine being laid by hands. That is very sneaky uh, on the north side of oh the right VP. Oh my goodness, look at that damage. Fortunately for him, he didn't retreat through the lava field over there. Yeah. <laughs> Might have had a chance of losing that squad. Um, but Hans isn't playing as aggressive as I thought he would. I mean, obviously not now because he's hurt on the half track and needs to get some repairs in. He's got the Panzergren right out now, which is going to do a very good job at shredding conscripts, especially on the right side where there's a lot of uh, hedge to work with, so you can just pop up in their face and get that close DPS in. Jeslin's actually been very fortunate that Hans did not cut him off until now on the left side fuel. Oh. So he's putting up his tier 3. He's actually finished putting it up and he's just a minute away from queuing up a T70, which is going to be a lot faster than last time that he built the T70. I think it came out around the 12 minute mark. So yeah. <clears throat> this is definitely an improvement from Jeslin uh, over game 1 on Famineville. He's got the AT gun ready. What a <laughs> shot. Oh my gosh, that was perfect. Perfect barrage from that AT gun. And we were talking about Jeslin delivering shots like this all throughout the tournament. And uh, he is not disappointing time and time again. Great play. I mean, it's so good to see Jeslin playing aggressively because, uh, you know, what? there's been a lot of time he just hasn't. It's just so nice to see. There's a lot of really good positions here. The conscripts trying to get the edge on... Uh, Look at that. This is sort of set up for this half track. Uh, barrage is ready again to go. That cooldown's really short. I forgot how fast it comes back up. <laughs> there we go. He's. I think he has the vision too. <clears throat> yeah, he, Hans, Hans respected that. He noticed that. He pulled back. Didn't want to take the shot and lose more than half his health there. Um, or be at less than half his health there. Another squad of Panzer Grenadiers coming out. No pack gun. He's definitely going to be relying on that airdrop. But he's not going to be able to utilize it in time for this T70. So that's actually kind of scary. And I don't think he's put down any teller mines either, right? Uh, Hans has put a teller mine down here. He has? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's one, a good spot. One here. Yeah, which is good. I mean, uh, it's. Uh, oh no, this conscript. Really, really bad for Jesley. Oh, he may get away with it. Oh, you <laughs> jinxed it. <laughs> Lick of flame. Oh, An I eight. think that was an attack round. Quite possibly. I mean, given it was from yeah, here, that was I would certainly way hope so. Away. Yeah, it, it, it. yeah. Well, he is rebuilding that conscript. That really does. That really is unfortunate because that could have been uh, guard squad. 
mm, mm. coming out rather than replacing a conscript, which is going to gradually fall off as the time goes by. You know, there's no upgrades really that you can utilize unless you pick guard rifle. 270 showing its head here. This is a really interesting point, and I don't know if you find this, but if you ever see like your opponent has used minesweepers, it normally means they themselves have put a mine down somewhere. It's like very commonly see this. It's like and a mental thing, it's right? It's like, a, yeah, I don't know if it's just something players do, but it's like if you see it, but you haven't encountered a mine yet, you kind of know it's coming. This is a bundle nade from the Panzer, nice it try. is. It was a nice try, but it didn't pull off. Oh, I think Jeslin should probably look at uh, some minesweepers. Yeah, it looks like he's But got we have the benefit of the right. uh, eye in the sky, of course. Poor Jeslin doesn't know that. Andy's bringing the T-70 oh, over to that side. This is scary. Uh, oh, oh, no. no. Oh no! no Deslin, no! Stop! Stop! You you know you know this, <gasps> bro! Please! <gasps> oh. <laughs> Helping hands, always with the high IQ plays. Oh man, that's gotta hurt so much. It has. That's in the chat for Jeslin. Oh. Hey, you know, I've got to say that uh, when that kind of thing happens, absolutely deserved. That was great yeah. play by hands. No, definitely. Um, but, you know, it's a common spot. It's a really common spot to have a Telemine out by that yeah, time. There was no excuse on Jeslin's part there. Yeah. He got too excited with that bait. There was an infantry squad there he was going for. Um, but there really is no excuse at this level to not even have a Minesweeper mm. equipped. So it's really unfortunate. He really needed that. Um, to control the game, control the flow. And now he's out of 70 fuel, 260 manpower, and the half-track is still alive, which is super important for Hans. I mean, he's gonna have to, uh, he's gonna have to get another one, I think. Yeah, I think so as well. There's no late way late retreat. Oh, no, oh. not the max. How did that survive? I don't know. I think the lava field will get him, though. How is it still <laughs> Okay, okay, he's good, he's good. He's got a story to tell to his grandchildren. The hand of God there. Have an isolated oh, nice flares. Trip I wire. like that. You know, those tripwire flares are so strong, give you vision, mm. and it's and when you're fighting against four-man squads, you know, not so much yes. with Ostrupin, they lose 25% of their DPS. It is super huge against Ostrupin. It's really uh, underused. In fact, that one of the clips I'd used in the trailer for this event was uh, two of them being used, like stacked, and, and it, it wiped you just got these yep. two-man squads in the retreat, <laughs> and then just. And you get a little bit of recon. Yeah, it's and it's so cheap. Here's that uh, second T70 yep. uh, that we're expecting. Do we have minesweepers? We rifle. don't have it yet. And uh, yeah, as you say, guard rifle. It's, uh, it's nothing different. We've seen just yeah, use. he's done it before. I really want to see him using PPSHs, though. He did not use it game one, even though he locked in guard rifles super quickly. Um, you know, those conscripts, if he plays it right, you know, he's got access to the hit the dirt. And he can shred these Ostrupin. He needs to get that advantage infantry-wise if he loses a T-70. You can see how scared Hans is of those barrages. Oh yeah, those things, oh my gosh. It's good manpower bleed is inflicting. And it looks like he's going to pick up this Ostrupin squad. Jeslin's still no fear going this far towards Hans's territory with no Minesweeper. He still doesn't have a Minesweeper. Yeah, well he's spent, he's building mines yeah. himself rather than scouting. And I... I <laughs> This is sketchy. Maybe we could say that's denying the, the full map range that T70 <laughs> could have, but you know, at the same time, he really wants that uh, flame projector half track down. And I don't blame him. No, yeah, I, I totally get the situation he's in, but just to avoid further pain, Jeslin, please. There we go. He's got the minesweeper. <laughs> Perfect. And, pa and Hans just uh, proc'd his uh, Panzerstreck, so he's he's also ready for this second T-70. Ha no Hans PPSH has been completely though. pulled over to the left side of the map, it's worth pointing out. So jeslin has got free reign to cap everything on this side. And uh, he's got a Maxim as well, so he's going to be able to suppress and, and win engagements fairly easily. There's the Minesweepers yes. from Hans. Nice job. And uh, oh, oh, could see that blow. Nice. nice. Uh, recovery there by Jeslin, you know, denying the free sweep, inflicting a bit of manpower bleed. Oh, look at this this barrage. This could actually be really bad. They're kind of clumped up. Okay, it took some friendly fire there. <laughs> <laughs> He's cancelled it for the shot on the AT gun. Good awareness there. Very quick to cancel the barrage. Uh, gets that really essential hit in. He's also attack grounding through the hedge back there to the Shrek squad. Nice work here. Hopefully he can knock down some models. 
Yeah, oh, he's wow. got a great eye for that. I mean, it's worth pointing out for people that, that don't maybe know, but that's the line of sight that he gets. Uh, there is actually no vision. He's ground attacking, and look at this tier four already. 15 minutes in, uh, guard rifle. Yeah, a couple so minutes away from a T uh, T34. Will we finally get to see a KV-1 though? I think we might. I would like to. I mean, uh, one of the great strategies I saw coming in the qualifiers, you know, across this event was uh, KV-1, two AT guns, tons of infantry. Yeah, uh, and it's you know a what? Like, tank, yeah, yeah. a real tank. Yeah, and and you know, it's just a pleasure to watch the people micro that. Um, so maybe we get to see. That. And if the if it goes without saying, you know, it's a good counter to P4s outright, because this armor value is so high that you're gonna get those bounces while the P4 isn't going to be enjoying that same benefit. So I think KV-1 actually fits here, although it is significantly more expensive. So if his, if his resource situation changes a lot and he gets cut off and stuff, I think he's going to have to settle for a 234. But I'm with you on wanting to see the KV-1. <laughs> We've already been treated to the Tiger, so can't make too many <laughs> uh, complaints. But yeah, it would be pretty nice to see a KV-1 here. But yeah, as this game progresses, uh, Hans, of course, he's lost that uh, Ostrupen squad. I think, really, that's been it uh, yeah. as far as it goes. One Ostrupen, one Khan, both ways. One squad. Here comes, you see the response from Hans. He's got the Maxim in negative cover. He's going to uh, go over there and burn them out of their position, Ooh. send them on their retreat home. Nice quick retreat from Jeslin there. So what are we waiting for here? Jeslin, maybe, uh, maybe trying to line up a flank of some kind. The enemy is taking what we have secured. It, for a second, it looked like he was putting down a mine, but I don't think he actually got one. Maybe he was sweeping something. The way the squad was like positioned, mm. they were kind of clumped up, like they were doing something there. But maybe it was just the way it moved together. But P4 coming out for Hans, um, and it looks like he did utilize the airdrop. I think we might have missed it because there is a second MG and a pack. I mean, he, he's know. used it near every time, so yeah, yeah, yeah. surprise for that. Great uh, insight from Hans there. He's seen the AT gun do the barrage, and uh, he's going to use ground attack through the hedgerow. The oh, shots this, off this gun is going to go out. Oh, no. He needs to recover that quickly, or this, this Panzer Grenadier squad is going to blow it up. Yeah, get that engineer out of there. You can do the repairs later. Good timing, because that, if that pack connected along with Double Shrek, I think it might have been blown up. I gotta say, Jeslin's keeping a very good range with the T70. Yes. He's a, oh, nice, nice returning hit. shot from the AT gun. Important there. Conscripts all roaring in. They're going to be first sight of the Panzer IV. He also, if we didn't get to see it on screen, but I saw it in the unit count up top. He actually used merge on his AT gun with his conscript, so he didn't have to pull it back to base. And that was perfect timing for this P4 to hit the field. Because you don't want to be cut you don't want you don't want to be caught rotating to yes. reinforce your guys when something as big as a P4 hits the field. But just on floating a lot too. Like, every faction has something, you know, whether it's like USF pop out of vehicles, like for the Soviets, cheap mines merging. It's, it's so right. good at keeping the front line. And He's utilizing uh, his faction's yeah. abilities, which is good to see. There we go. He's getting away with getting away from that uh, huge float that he had, calling in some guards. Looks like he's saving a lot of munitions again to, to drop some skill planes on his opponent, <laughs> which I mean is understandable. The IL-2 strafe, even though it's been nerfed, it's still very strong. Um, I can totally understand why. Now, still no PPSHs, though. I honestly thought he would at least get one or two here because, you know, URA with PPSHs is not something to take lightly. Uh, maybe he just forgot, honestly. I don't see a reason why he would not be getting it outside of just wanting to hoard all his munitions for uh, skill plane. Yeah. Uh, you can't blame him. He's too CP away. It's going to be yeah. quite dominant when it comes out. Um, you know, Hans in the last game, he, he struggled with, with uh, air superiority. Mm -hmm. um, didn't really deal with it or want to deal with it. And, I'm pretty sure he feels like uh, Jeslin maybe only claimed that game due to uh, the That's airstrike true. abilities. But it depends, you know, is he going to deal with it this time round? Or is he confident that uh, being pushed off the map in that way isn't going to hamper him? Yeah, good job kiting though by Jeslin there. He didn't even take a single hit because he knows there's a P4 nearby. He could easily get volleyed and lose his, lose his tank. He does connect one shot here. He definitely needs to pull back. 
Uh, VET 2 on the T70, so definitely want to keep that alive for the vision. It'll provide you with that KV-1 actually coming on the field. There we go. Wish granted. <laughs> uh, Stormless. Perfect. I did want to see that. Hands of four. Being good timing. So engineers here providing good line of sight for the AT gun. Potentially get a shot off. It does Ooh. and hits rear armor. Do we see the AT grenade? Oh, it looks for a second yeah, like they got it. They were so close. They were doing that little stutter step that yep. they were about to throw it, but unfortunately didn't get it off. Um, which is really unfortunate for Jeslin because that second P4 hit the field, and if he got that 18 8 connecting, it would have bought him a lot more time. Let's see another barrage. <laughs> Whips there and gives Hans plenty of time to get out of there. Uh, but look at the look at the map. Hans has really brought the fight almost to Jeslin's base, and look at this flanking maneuver. He's taking advantage of Jeslin not having any tanks, as well as this sh uh, shrub right here, preventing the auto fire. You want to see that KV-1 though? That's gonna that's gonna stop this. Jeslin, this is just a point in the game. They're both, you know, neck and neck at 400 VPs right mm -hmm. now. Resources they're not too, uh, you know, they're not too different. And uh, this is a moment where Jeslin just needs to collect himself, maybe on his side of the map and uh, get everything together, make a nice, strong push. Does not want to lose these guards, Darby. No, he needs those. Oh, that's a huge blow. Mark to, uh, IL-2 coming in. Oh, almost cleared the pack there, but this KV-1 is going to be pushed back a bit by those Shreks. He's definitely got to pull back a little bit because this is his only unit keeping him in the game right now, is the KV-1. He needs to keep this alive. He needs to get some, get some kills with it. See a nice AT grenade here, if Jeslin's paying attention. Nice shot with the AT gun there. I think it was an attack round through the hedge. Oh no, it was the KV tank one. itself. Nice. Equally as impressive, but uh... This is this is what uh, Jeslin wanted. I mean, just have a look at the uh, tactical map at the moment. This has just allowed him to get so much map control yep. back, and Hans was in a great position. Now Hans is back in his base. It's, uh, you know, I, I don't blame him for saving up for that. No, honest. absolutely not. And he's getting this. He's getting this room, this space, deny some resources, and ultimately get out that second AT gun, which is definitely going to be needed to push back two P4s. Because this KV1, I don't think it's going to get the opportunity. Oh, what a nade! That was really good from Hans, utilizing that door to get the maximum value out of that bundle nade. It was very, very close to wiping it, um, but did did give it a good try. That couldn't have been closer, really, to losing that squad. He was lucky to get away with that. Should have been a squad right. Yeah, I don't think he'll be able to really chase down a P4 unless it's really, really low health, because that those Panzergren Shreks, Hans is using them really well. He's literally just hugging his tanks so that they're always ready to support. T70 under fire here, using his recon mode. I think he... Oh, oh, he got oh, stuck oh, while he's trying to reverse through the hedge in the middle. The only thing that'll save him here is a miss. Oh, he tried to jump out! <laughs> <laughs> almost, almost. It was a valiant effort. Belly flop. That's a huge blow, though, because that recon is would have been game-changing for double AT guns. Like, it's absolutely disgusting how much vision you get from that T-70. So, I think he needs to, he needs to get it together on that. I don't think it's so out of the question that he builds a third. Um, no, absolutely. Because it, it's just so useful. You know, yeah, I think seven. rebuilding it maybe after his second tank is going to be worthwhile. His IL-2 is almost ready now. I think just a couple more seconds. Yeah, that's ready to go again as well. So he's good to go for another push. With a, He's definitely got to concentrate his forces so he can make the most out of it like last time. Uh, this AT gun is taking a while to target. It's just outside of the arc. KV-1 actually, does it have line of sight there? No, it doesn't. It's actually taking uh, shots. Destroyed the sandbag. Into the uh, dark. Again, you just get a sense of these players trying to pick out where they are. Hans is now returning <laughs> shots. Neither of them can really see each other. There we go, they can now. There's the railway, railway. artillery. Oh, he just knocked out a conscript, I believe. I think that was a conscript. And taking down that house in the center. Are we going to see a uh, an IL-2? Yep. Yes, we are. Oh, that P4 started because it hit the territory point. It does get 18 aided. Gosh, every time Hans makes a push, IL-2 
soars onto the map. Oh, that half track almost went out. What a <laughs> man! What this a is heated crazy. moment in this game. There's so much going on. Jeslin's still trying to be aggressive on the VPs, and they're constantly just taking VPs down off of each other, kind of going in tandem. Sturmovic still, still pushing units. Panzer off the Grenadier mountain. went down. Fortunately, it wasn't his Shrek squad. Um, was that him? Was that what that was? Yeah, I think it was the plane that finished it off while I was retreating with one man. Um, now comes the long repair speed, long repair time for Ostir. So this is going to give Jeslin a little bit of time to start recapturing the map, although he himself really has nothing much on the field to cap with. He's been taking a lot of losses. Too telling, statistically. It is neck and neck. Not even just saying that, it is very, very even at this point. It's worth noting as well, this game is a decider for mm -hmm. one player to drop out of the event. Yeah, this is for going home or advancing, so it's uh, everything is important here. Yeah, and I guess in that sense, we don't really expect to see anything careless mm -hmm. unless the moment is, uh, is exactly what either player wants it to be. It's going to be an SU-85 out from Jezelin. Good call, and, uh, I like it. Yeah, that's a P4 probably, killer. Absolutely, and uh, I can imagine that will be uh, supported by the T-70 as the game goes on. Yeah, i definitely like to see him rebuild that T-70, because that vision on an open map like this is, is going to go a long way. But for now, he's got to survive until then, so... And the grenade, good nice retreat. Nice attempt at a nade, yeah. Yes, and uh, both players are very, very quick to grenades in this game. Very, very quick on snares, ranges. We saw great uh, ranged engagements. T17 in the half track. That half track was still on the field. 24, 24 kills. kills. Yeah, it's good at holding the flanks at late game. You know, you don't have to be as aggressive with it. Just keep it in the back. Protect maybe your pack gun if it gets pushed upon by infantry, or cover the VP if it gets harassed. Um, little push here with both tanks coming from Jeslin. The P4 is looking to react. It's going to get a pot shot off, and it's fortunately covered by the house, so I don't think the SU-85 is going to be able to return fire here. Yeah, he's going to pull back. Smart decision. Uh, crossroad. Can be and the Hans way. actually put up Tier 4, and he's very close manpower-wise uh, for a Panther. Oh, actually, you can just build it now. It was... Uh, thinking well, about the Command yeah, Panther. Is, uh, man power. He went Brumba in the, in the first game, which was a good choice, but... I mean, it was slightly different. There were guards. There was you know, a lot yeah. more of an infantry presence. Now, you know, there's more support weapons from Jeslin. Uh, less of the infantry clusters. You could even get a Werfer. Yeah. He's got plenty of fuel reserves. Um, but you're right. He did go Broombear last time he was in this situation. He had the P4s for support. And he built the Broombear to finish out the game. Um, honestly, he could... Either of those three choices are reasonable, so... I'm actually just thinking about it. Has he seen... What's Hans doing here? Sorry, by the way. He's getting ready for a, a flank, I think. But uh, has Hans seen the SU-85 yet? Has it taken a shot already? Yeah, the pack was taking a shot off at it right there. I think he... Okay, he is building the Sturm Panzer. So that is going to put a lot of pressure on the infantry that Jeslin has on the field. He needs to be very careful with his uh, crew, his uh, Maxim crews and his Zisk guns, because that Broombear can do a lot of work against support crews so you just gotta have to find the right moment here and not get overwhelmed by these p4s on the flank because this su-85 is in kind of an awkward spot he could get flanked around shot through the house with attack ground i think he needs to reposition this he is getting a lot of good shots in with that this gun though knocks the p4 down to around 40 percent health just uh, <clears throat> the center of this map can be so delicate produce games that just go on for uh really long periods of time i wouldn't i wouldn't it looks i mean we're 30 minutes in right now and uh, it's still very very even i'd say we're not really uh at a stage where players are making the kind of game winning pushes mm -hmm. so we're probably in for another hour long game here yeah but i think hans does have the critical mass to apply a lot of pressure here he's got the double p4 he's got the broom bar he's got a pack um jeslin is very defensive right now he's got the at gun he's just waiting for hans to make a mistake so it's really going to come down to who gets caught in a bad position. Um, you know, that goes for every game, but especially here with the composition that we see from both of these players. 
Uh, Broomberry takes his first shot off, takes a lot of health off of that Conscript squad, forces it back, but does take a hit in return. Um, these disc guns are a bit out of position, but fortunately it's just an Ostrupen squad, so he's got a little bit of time to get away there. Maxim on the left side of this hedgerow. KV1 is coming in to uh, try and assist. Going to be a foul, so I think there is enough health loss. Uh, not to activate. Actually, the model died as it was fausting, <laughs> which means it's, uh, yeah. it's cancelled. Again, the barrage nice from Jeslin. It's been Very so good. good. They've been so good in this uh, in this tournament. Yeah, that thing is amazing. It's very scary. It's a mini mortar for you when you need it. Um, and a good range. So it looks like Jeslin's ready for another aisle too. We can be using that defensively here or offensively. Ooh, I like that. I like nice that. hit through the house there. Just a little bit of sight. See here the uh, Panzer Grenadiers. Their priority is going to be the KV-1. Railway artillery in. has been dropped. Jeslin is in prime firing range. Will it hit? I think he's okay. It might kill the engineer squad actually. Oh, okay. Never mind. I. I looked at the flare on the left, it wasn't the middle. <laughs> but still, that is scary when you hear that sound coming down. That, that explosion is massive. Okay, that half track has just been able to... Uh... Oh, P4 just took a huge hit. I don't know from what. I think it was a KV-1, yeah. Be, uh, it must be the SU-85, I would have thought. Yeah, it's actually almost VET-1, so it must have been taking some hits from the SU-85. Um, very good VP uh, control from Jeslin, you know, with him being a bit behind on this uh, pop cap, you know, he's been around 20 off the last few minutes, but he's still been very uh, aware of his VP situation and buying himself a lot of time. And like you said, it looks like we're going for the long haul. We're 32 minutes in already. Both players are still over 300 VPs. Really, I don't think it's gonna come down to a VP warm. It might just be a KO. Uh -huh. I think so, yeah, and, and I think when you look at this, look at this in a different angle, at the moment, Hans is stuck on what he's playing. He can't really build anything else, his pop caps as it stands. Uh, Jeslin has still got, you know, some selections he can make, and he wants to make, you know, the, the, the best decision here to, to come out of this. Yeah. Uh, he, I would say, almost has an advantage in that. Just look at the line of sight here from that. Look at that, that's amazing. It does forego his movement, but wow. He is getting a lot of good shots in, and Hans is having a little trouble with pathing here. Does take an extra shot in. Looks like the SU-85 is moving up. It is not taking return fire. I think the pack was shooting at the KV-1. Yeah. Nice doubles this there to support and prevent the P4 from closing in and getting some flanking rear hits. IL-2 coming down in on the pack and the MG here. Not gonna do too much against the MG until it's pinned. There we go, it's pinned, so it can't suppress anymore. No reason to stay there. Pulls back for repairs, and looks like Jeslin's gonna get a lot of space here to cap the VPs and all the, all the territory points. I'm interested to see what he's gonna get next, because he's floating quite a bit. Um, maybe another KV-1 to just have a meat shield for his SU-85. Uh, actually, it's going to be the T-34. Oh, T-34. So I, I don't mind mobile. that because kv one's slow. Yeah. SU-85 is restricted to, you know, vehicles only. And uh, this is probably exactly what's needed to mobile, you know, move around the, the map. I thought we probably got uh, some room for a T-70 still. Yeah. And uh, I, I think, you know, you want to get the SU-85 maybe off of the focus site and let the T-70 do that in recon mode. Yeah, exactly. You want to be able to get out of there if you get flanked on the side. And if you have that... Um, special ability on for the SU-85, there's a time, there's a cooldown until you can deactivate that and yeah. get out of there. So if you get caught at the wrong moment, your SU-85 is going to die. So I mean, it's worth saying, Company Heroes is a game that works on synergy of units. Yep. Uh, you know, you exactly. can't just build all of one, expect, it's, it's composition based and you know, you're going to use certain units to spot for others. It's spent a lot of time learning what does what. But, uh, no doubt, I think T-34 Half is... track one out. Ooh, that will be, be... I think it's up towards the base a little bit. Yeah, no? there, oh, it there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The smoldering <laughs> <laughs> wreckage that... Uh, he paid his dues. Well. He did a good job this game. Oh, yeah. Um, and that p freed up some pop cap for Hans to get a Panther. He's going to have an armada of tanks. I think Dane would be proud. <laughs> um, I don't say about the Panther. Wait a minute. The Panther is... Uh, 
18. 18. So yeah, he was just at 82. He queued it up, but he just reinforced. So, so I don't think he's going to be able to get it on the field. Yeah. And then if he does, and he's lost a lot of infantry, he's then not going to be able to reinforce the exactly. infantry. So that's, I don't know how I feel about the Panther from a pop cap perspective. I don't think that's sensible, but yeah. we'll, we'll see how that plays out. Well, you uh, know, it is, you know, that's a good point mm. that you bring up about not being on a reinforced infantry. But if you look at it from his perspective, if he queues it up and he can't build it out yet, like it won't get deployed, that cooldown is already gone. So if he changes his mind, yeah. he can cancel it, no problem, gets his stuff back. But if he wants it, then it'll come out as soon as the pop cap is there. We'll, uh, we'll find out yeah, how, we'll see. how this one goes. I think, I think it's a good, good call here. That um, is a, a great snare from the conscripts. They managed to get a uh, 18 aid off on the Brim Bear. Got a suppressed maximum in the center. It's two VPs for Jesen at the moment. He's taking his fuel. Incendiary rounds from the MG42 from the north. They're trying to force each other away, both of at three. It's uh, a battle with no winner. <laughs> MG is struggling a bit because he is suppressed and now he's pinned so he won't be able to suppress any more squads while he's pinned and the rate of fire is significantly reduced so it's basically nullified that threat. I do want to point out, look at the map right now. Uh, it, it, it's now I would say definitely in favor of Jezlin at the stage in the game. We've got engineers walking up there. They were detecting mines I think, mm -hmm. just having a look to see what helping hands may have laid there. The uh, SU-85 picking off the Brumba at long range. There is a threat from the AT gun. KV-1, now VET-2, moving up the center of the map. The only real threat here, I would say, is something like the, uh, the, the Panzer Grenadiers. Look at that, deflected but both of them. <laughs> and there's no side armor, as you guys know, on Company Heroes. It's just half of the tank is front armor, half is the rear armor. And both of those went on the front, technically. So there was a good chance for it to bounce with a high value of the KV-1. But still fortunate for Jocelyn, allows his tank to stay on the field for a lot longer there. Um, looks like Hans is blitzing here to get this Maxim out of the field, but it's struggling a bit with the pathing. <laughs> Don't know if that's quite what he wanted from that uh, from oh, that Blitzkrieg. So. Oh, Where looks he like go? he's just foregoing that and going for the Zisk gun on the side here. It might not be a good idea with the SU-85 available to support. It was getting some repairs back there. Oh, no, 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 no. This is not good. He might actually be able to flank it around. He's got a chance, but there's no way for him to go all the way around. He's got to go through. Oh, oh what a mine. What a punish from Jeslin there. Well played on the mine placement there. That was very crucial. That, that was a vet too? That people? was unnecessary. I mean, I know, I know he wants the Panther, which he's now got. Yeah. Fantastic, but uh, probably unnecessary to take it so far on that route. Panther does a little sweep before going back around. And KB1, I think, is actually going to help on the left-hand side now. Jeslin desperate for that triple cap. AT guns already being forced back to base. KB1 with a long shot in. And it's possible for this AT gun oh, to go no. down to the IL-2. Needs to get it back into the base sector where he can reinforce. Um, maybe it was an intentional dive because he just immediately so. queued up so. the P-Warper. Yeah. Um, maybe he was just looking to pick something up and sacrifice it. Either way, he didn't get anything from it, so... Uh, yeah, I think actually that's all it was. It's just yeah. uh, throwing a weaker unit to potentially get one more suitable for the situation. Perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that. And just a shame, really, that he didn't get anything more out of it. But again, Panzerwerfer is uh, going to be filling this gap now. And uh, yeah, he's yeah. going to have to get close though with the barrages, which is going to put it at risk because he needs to be accurate with his barrage, or otherwise it's not going to do as it's not going to do the damage he wants it to do if he does it from super far away as we know the closer you are when you do these barrages with rocket artillery or just any indirect arty in general it's going to be more accurate so i'm interested to see how he's going to play it lining up of course he's got to be so careful of that su-85 it's nearly going to be vet three it's just so a slightly beast at yeah. vet three Grenade. We've got a snare there from the conscripts on that Panzer IV. Is there going to be a response? It's the SU-85 called Still slow moving. Ability, yeah. The, yep. yeah, there we go. He took it off. <laughs> it's going at a snail's pace there. As long as he's got the engineers pushing up here and he gets the line of sight off of these. And, uh, Man, that sound is so satisfying. It is. <laughs> That's why we play this game. Yeah, the sounds are really on point in this game. Ooh, almost knocks out that Vet 3 MG. Very beneficial. Take out that vet. Panzerwerfer barrage coming on the middle on the guards. If he shot on the retreat path, he may get it. Oh! Very close call there. Just a little bit uh, too much uh, spread there. 
Yeah, the shells are actually in the right place, and you kind of just put it on the uh, on the retreat. Yeah. Catch that model flying. Um, but you know, it's uh, it's a very hit and miss with the Panzer yeah. as to how much damage it actually does. But great for uh, support weapons. It's going to be useful in this game. Good choice. And Jeslin's up to two Maxims, and I think he stole an MG34. So he's got plenty of uh, static units to hold down these VPs. IL-2 coming in, dropped right on the pack. It's going to AOE a bit on the, that Ostrupin, which goes down, had an LMG, bet three. This looks like a push coming in from Jeslin. This, this pack is almost knocked out as well. Sturmpanzer just took double hits there from the SU-85 and the T-34. It's a flank from the uh, Panther. This is exactly what this unit was designed to do, get in there quickly, but not confident that he can get around the rear armor. Has to be careful though, because that's a uh, SU-85. <laughs> Just see a plane crashing down there on the strategic point. The SU-85 is going to take a guest shot. It's great uh, ground attacking from Jezelin. Exactly what we expect. Yeah, that was that was a good rotation there. I think he had his ZIS gun relatively nearby there as well, if, if Hans decided to commit to his flank, um, which he did, unfortunately, because it looks like conscript and a guard there available to support if that situation unfolded but um he's pulled back for repairs getting that uh damage engine off his p4 which is back on the field he's got a very good angle here on this at gun but he's gonna have to pull back here because yeah you don't want to sit in front of two at guns but they're not actually able to set up yet until oh. Pull back. oh the railway he needs to get out of there right now. I don't know. Oh, look at that. He's got the Panzerwerfer on the VP. Here comes the railway. Where is it going to land? Oh, it might kill the... No. I think he's I think out of there. Oh, oh, no. Okay. I would have screamed right there if he lost both of those squads. The only engagement going on right now is the KV-1 is uh, stressing out against the uh, Panther and the Brumbear. KV-1 gets very, very low there. Snare that's just making things so difficult for uh, units like the Panther. And really, you need that unit available to just be chasing things mm -hmm. like the KV-1, penetrating on the move. Looks like Hans is going for another pack now. I think that's a good call. Um, I mean, there wasn't really much he can build with this pop cap. You know, he can't queue up another tank. I don't remember how much pop cap, pop cap warfare is. I think it's nine or ten check actually i'm it's, not 100 uh, oh no totally off it's 12 so you could definitely uh you wouldn't be able to get a second one Expensive so pack is definitely the look, logical choice you look at the t34 which is uh 10 hands worth is 12. <laughs> isn't that funny it is, uh, yeah but uh, i mean i guess you know we, we know that the allies are meant to have more tanks kind of thing uh, yeah the, 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 t34 is especially you would think uh, Jezelin's actually going to have a really nice looking army uh, when he gets his T-34 on the, on the field. Still paying attention to the VP game and both players and probably about 50 VPs of each other. And uh, 42 minutes in, this has oh, the potential man. to tip one hour and then some. You know what we haven't seen from Jezelin, I think, all tournament is a Katusha. I, I, you'll be glad that he hasn't. I, oh, this is a oh big shot! Oh my goodness, that looked like a definite wipe. It was a little unfortunate there for Hans on the AoE. Didn't quite connect on that front model. Um, it, Je Jeslin's Katushas are... Uh, not too good. There's something to be looked at. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of like brings it on, he'll park it in front of the SU-85, fire it at max range, and then you know, it doesn't kill anything. <laughs> You know, yeah, probably not the best way to use it. Yeah. yeah, I noticed he's been using mortar a lot more recently, and I think that's a comfortable, <laughs> a comfortable thing for, for him to use. Looks like the Panzerwerfers hit Vet 1. Once it starts getting more veterancy, we're going to see a lot more frequency with those barrages, which is going to be extremely, extremely relevant once the VP war really ticks down, because that can deny a cap, it can wipe squads capping. Um, critical engagement over here. Nice hits from that AT gun. It's a bit of an issue, actually. There's the target weak point. Hands using that to stun Very the KV-1. Nice. Penetrating shots all around. Can the Panther get that last shot off? It is threatened by the SU-85. Faust, Faust doesn't it has, kill. It has literally one HP if you look at that look bar that. right there. That is gross. I'm yeah. sorry. That That's very unfortunate. Hans uh, deserved. He deserved <laughs> to get that. Three. That would have been a huge deal to lose that one. He's gonna be unhappy. I can see Twitch chat right now. <laughs> Where is Hans' luck Every in this game? Oh, uh, but then I would re reply, "What did you expect?" <laughs> <laughs> 
That, I mean, that. I'm sorry, that was very unfortunate for him. I would have been tilted off the face of the earth because this is getting very dire. Beyond the difficult situation, good hits from the Panzer Shreks on the S-85 again, stuck in the Focus Farmer, just pulling out of that. There is uh, no suppression from the Maxim on these uh, Panzer Grenadiers. Need to be careful that they don't take a yeah. bundle grenade. Are we going to see it? Yes, yeah, we are seeing it. Oh, he's actually throwing the AT gun. Looks like it's going to be a wipe. Yeah, good stuff. Hopefully he can take advantage of that and blow up this, this gun because I don't think that even had that much bet to begin with. Panzer Warfare Garage coming in. Kind of a follow-up to his assault there with the Panzer Grenz, but didn't really accomplish anything because Justin was wise to move his Maxim apart to reset his arc and prevent uh, flank. It's almost like he expected it to be recruited. Yeah. He was like immediately it was uh, a good, yeah. timing it. I like that. I like that a lot. It was a good try by, by Hans there to take advantage and potentially rewipe it along with a squad, but didn't work out as planned. Lots of repairs going back there. Some blow torches. Nice to have a good look at the battlefield sometime, just to get a sheer idea of the scale <laughs> uh, of this fight between these two players. Looks like the loading screen right here. I know, right? <laughs> Big hits. Brutal. The T-34 has been so good at defending this point. And this is what this uh, map always seems to boil down to, is the center VP and who has the composition to crack the other. Helping Hands has got great range capabilities in the Brumbear and the uh, Panzerwerfer. Jeselin just has sheer tank power. Uh, he's able to flank, he's able to ram if he wants mm -hmm. to. He's got that uh, penetration from the front with the SU-85. Who's going to win this? Uh, not entirely sure. This is, you can go either way here. It, I think it's really going to come down to that positioning I was referring to either. If someone gets caught, you know, with their rear showing on the SU-85 or whatever tank it may be, or stays too long, like right here, look at that connection. I think he's right out of range now. He is dropping the planes. But it's not gonna really accomplish that much. I mean, it is important to prevent those pioneers from clearing those support crews because they were all pretty low there. But I don't know if it was too good of a use of the munitions because it doesn't look like he's pushing in with his tanks. They're all repairing a little bit here. It almost, I mean, he's nearly got enough to use the ability again quickly. So, um, you know, I almost feel like he can. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. That was just full health a moment ago. Yeah. Is there a telemine there? That'd be the Shreks, the AT gun, and the, the Panther. So and, the uh, yeah. I mean, uh, this is another thing. It's just like the Tiger in the second game. When the Panther picks up the veterancy, you know, when, it's, when it's still and motionless and it has the accuracy, uh, you know, amplifier, it's um, it's not bad, you know, in conjunction with the Panzer Shreks. Yeah. Mobile AT is, is really good for the Oste right now. He's got, yeah, he's got the good uh, composition oh, when it comes God. to synergy. Plane crash right there. <sighs> Katusha actually coming out from Jeslin. Yeah. He's actually building one. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> I hope he well, proves me wrong. Yeah, I, let's I see it. You know, whatever. Look. GG. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, this is the tool that's going to carry Jeslin. Oh no, he right? can't, he can't take that back. Take is it, it back. What, what pop cap is that? P Warfare's 12, Katusha's probably around the same, right? 12. Okay, it's the exact same. Makes sense. Um, plane gets shot shot down there. Oh, this is nice. Ura. Should be able to get the uh, AT grenade off. Oh, Big hit. hit from the Brumba, but there is a snare. The T-34 oh, has there. seen the opportunity to go in. Don't know if he's going to get many penetrating shots on the frontal armor, though. I would say that Brumbear is relatively safe. Still engagements on the left-hand side. The KV-1 is trying to flank around the VET-3 AT gun, and that AT gun is so important with the target weak point ability. Not want to lose that weapon. Yeah, fortunately for Hans, Jeslin didn't get any PPSHs, so that conscript did not really threaten him too much. Katusha coming in here, going to connect a little bit with the Penzer Grand Squad and the pack. Um, wow, that was a good, good set of barrage right there. Yeah, you know that that's not bad. Oh, it might oh, be no, lucky he's here though. Shooting through it. No, oh, this is the bed three. Pack. Oh no, that wasn't the bed three. Proving me wrong, and I like that. Oh, Great play no. again, destroying the AT gun for Hans slowly. Whittling away Han's chances of getting back into the game. You've got conscripts running up the field, trying to get the snare on the Panther. 
we have uh, look at this veteran seat veteran seat three veteran seat two veteran seat three again plane. soviet war machine second panther coming out for hans he's still got time vp wise so Absolutely. he's just gonna have to repair here and bide his time wait for the il2 straight to go away um, and look for an opportunity because unfortunately that KV-1 didn't go down. It had, a, it had one HP left from the Faust. I think his main target here, Stormless, is going to have to be the SU-85. Uh, absolutely, yeah. That is the unit that is keeping everything, uh, everything oh, no. at bay and in a state of emergency, quite frankly. The other issue is that with 145 VPs left, uh, Jeslin's going for a triple cap. Hans has to stunt that immediately, which it looks like he is attempting. Look at that spawn. That's a little weird. <laughs> I've never seen it come in like that. Nope. It's, uh... Oh, right. I forget. Yeah, it hates bushes. That's right. It's... But you know what? Credit to Jeslin. He was behind for much of the early game. This is quite the comeback. Um, he's got Hans pretty much locked into his base with, you know, a lot of help from that strafe, but... You know, not to take away, he's been doing really well. Actually, might even pick up this Ostrupen squad, which is Hans's last anti-infantry squad. We're seeing the dive. This is going to be it. Oh, Hans pretty low. wants to get back into this game desperately. It's his last chance. Nice uh, setup there with the pack. Panther turret going a little crazy there, but it looks like, oh, he bounced the kill shot. KV-1 gets away once again. Katusha responding to the pack. Needs to get out of there. Vet 3 Panther looks like it's going to eat it in 18 8 Yeah, I think it took a snare there. We've got the SU-85 driving up with the T-34, taking oh big goodness. shots against the Brumbar. The Katusha getting a load of units on the retreat. Big what plays. Jeslin's already microing, sorry, uh, queuing up another T-34 to keep this advantage. He's just pushing tank oh, no. after tank. Oh, no. This, oh. This could be a little bit Look too bold. Rim. I don't think it's going to make it. <laughs> wow. Nice attempt by Jeslin. Um, Hans Vet 3 Panther lives to see another day. He's going to have to wait about two decades to get repaired, though. This is so dangerous. This is going to give Jeslin a lot of time to solidify this, this triple cap, keep him off, and close out the game. Oh, I didn't even notice he brought out a, a Danga shoots. Yeah, he's uh, all stooped up. <laughs> I mean, it's... It, uh, at that point, you know, when the SU-85 is there, I'm thinking, ooh, could Hans get this Vet-3 Panther doing some work? Because uh, it was on its own, it was unsupported. Uh, and not at full health, so... Opportunities, maybe, but it's so risky with low health units. Um, look at these pioneers for some right insane that we get. Yeah, so their improved uh, squad repair time at Veteran C2, and uh, you'll notice the difference right. when, when these Absolutely. aren't uh, Vet 2. <laughs> As to how far they repair. He's Nevertheless, down to 60 though. Hans is going to get uh, another squad out. Let's have a look at Jeslin's defenses here. Uh, great, great oh. positioning. <laughs> Something just died. That would be the Wait, uh, T34. There was another fresh T34. I didn't even realize. Yeah, that was... he, he just brought one on, and so that has literally oh gone goodness. straight in. Well, that that certainly helps Hans's uh, case here. He's he's stabilized on the VP drain. He's at 52 now. Really scary, but it's still a little bit of time. He just needs to prevent... Oh my gosh, did you see how close that was? <laughs> he cannot lose that right now. He needs that to hold VPs. Lightning reflexes. Again, Jeslin. Oh, I mean, no. This is the thing with the Katusha. Actually, he's, he's had a bit of success with this, but he does like to fire it at max range where the spread is uh, at its worst. Here's the Panther. The Panther is he's going in... He's Almost wipes the guard squad. Guard squad goes down in the middle. He's got Looks like the SUD5 is rotating oh! around. Gets the kill shot. Well played there. Nice push. He needs to... Oh, he already used the push. <laughs> he gets the Katusha as well. What a push from Hans. This is... He needs to get out of there now. This is incredible. Hans is well and truly still in this. He has to get the repairs rolling. Really has to get the repairs rolling. Jeslin does have the oh IL-2, so he still can defend the VPs. He's going to use it back at the point where uh, well, vehicle IL repairs are. Well, IL-2 isn't going to do anything to these tanks here. Well, it's going to stop will. the repairs. Yeah, That's exactly. The... It's going to force this Pioneer to retreat any moment now. Looks like this Ostrupen squad that he just called in a moment ago is... Okay, it looks like it's getting away. Guard squad went down in the middle from, I think, the Panzerwerfer. And it looks like a bunch of MGs died too. Jeslin had three. I think maybe I missed that earlier, but this is going to be super even now if Hans can get away with his tanks. Where is this power? It's going to be on the VP. 
Yeah, it's a, a nice one too. Clears the what squad. Brumba could clear another one on the retreat. It would be a miracle. Okay, that would have been like. Okay, look at this. The secure, the secure ability. <laughs> he is getting the bleed down one VP at a time now, almost two. He needs to get in that cap zone right now. Okay, he cancelled it. There, there still is a lot of AT here. The IL-2s, again, this ability was key uh, in this push working. It's a good opportunity as well for some crushes. Actually, uh -oh, KV1. He's going for the going for the Armada vehicles here. It's Panthers so risky. Panthers max range connecting with the KV-1. Doesn't even care. It's good thing to pull so out there. risky. Oh my gosh, this Panther is one hit away from being think, Is it worth it? Is it worth pushing for that? I don't know. I think he has to do something because he is running out of time. The triple cap is about to be set in place in just a moment. Top VP is about to be capped. Middle is under his control as well. This gun just got absolutely obliterated by that broom bar. Not this one here. Yeah, both of them are gone now. Oh, there Desmond it is, there no it is. More AT gun. We were hoping oh that this gosh, would happen. Oh my gosh, it just missed. That would have been a rear armor hit. Can he get the last shot? Does he have it? He oh. does. It's, oh, it's rear armor. Oh, it's dead again. This He's got to push. Time. He's got to push. Look Dude, at this. Jasmine's got to be dead and dead and. <laughs> oh, there's no mine. Okay, Urod to get an AT nade in place. Okay. He's got time. He's got time. He's yeah. got time. He it's going to be very close. He's going to have like 10 VPs left, I think. Maybe a little bit more than that. He just needs to get everything on the VPs right now. He is inflicting so many casualties on Jeslin right now. <laughs> Jeslin has held this game for so long. He's got 269 VPs. He could just pull back, build his army up. Yeah, but he's, but he's under pressure. Away. He's under pressure. He's, he's throwing oh, this. Oh no, this broom bear is putting in work, but he's preventing the cap here. Is this is, the squad? This is so dead. tense. This is this is for the game right here. The, oh, the squad goes down. He's, he's still bleeding one VP. This conscript is an absolute hero in the middle. <laughs> is it gonna prevent? He's trying to push. Oh no! It looks like he's gonna secure the win. It's so tense. Oh, he's got one God. VP, and that's it. It's gonna be helping hands out of the tournament. Oh. GG. Jeselin moves through. Helping hands eliminated at the last moment. What a game. What a game. I wish just have a look at everybody in here reacting to that as it goes. They I wish you could hear everyone's absolutely cheering. Nuts. There's no lights, so you can't <laughs> see it, but they are they are literally screaming. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> look at Loveness. Loveness is like what? It's like what? <laughs> that was the finale we were looking for yep. in the game three. Yeah. It was absolutely gut wrenching. Like, I don't think we left enough time. I thought he was going to neutralize it. I know. I didn't I realize know. Jeslin had that had one three VP. man conscript just chilling in the middle. <sighs> it's. Uh, I feel really bad for Hans. He played his soul out yeah. that game. Both yeah. of them played extremely well. But. The VP drain was just too much. And did you see the ending health on all his tanks? They all yeah. had like 30% or less. Yeah. But he was still utilizing them because he had no other choice. It's just, you know, it, if there had been like 20 more VPs in that game at any point, it would have been Hans's game easily. I mean, maybe even 10. Even like 10 VPs left, it would have been Hans's game. He could have pulled that off. Time. I'm sweating right was now. Again, it's like him. I was playing that. <laughs> I know, I know. Oh my but, um, god! I can see hands in the in the uh, in the live room now. But uh, honestly, just Heartbreak. one of the best games. We keep saying this game after game today. Uh, you know, from Talisman to Love Nest all the way up to this has just been like wow. And this series has taken so long. I don't it's know like if we've left enough time. Half hours or something. Uh, yeah. Do we even have enough time this weekend for the, for the event? Vaughn was saying we should have made this a three day. Uh, do but you know what? <laughs> he, he may be right. Um, okay, well, I mean, we're going to have to get on with the rest of the games quickly because yeah. we've got so much of this tournament uh, left. Everybody wants me to switch the camera to hands. You can just see him there. It's, uh, I don't know if we can get some light on this. Let me. Uh, <laughs> there he is. That's, That's Devem in the corner, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, oh man. But you know what? That next game is an absolute classic. You know how they call Real Madrid, Barcelona, Clasico. Mm. This is the Clasico of Co2. Mm. Love Ness versus Jeslin. This is like the old Titans it's playing. Back to 2014. 2014, uh, 2015. Absolutely. It's just, wow. What a tournament. And, uh, you know. Oh my gosh. Anyway, 
Well Guys, played. we know that you're having a great time watching these games. They've all been fantastic today. We have to do a quick turnover. Um, we've just got to line up. I don't know if we're going to be casting next series or if mm. we're switching it up. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think they're going to sub me out after that long series, but... Well, uh, or I could go and you, you can I'm, stay. <laughs> I'm cool to do whatever. I'm, I can chill here on the couch with all the rest of the squad. It's so I good can cast. It's it so matter. much fun in there, I honestly. Know. Um, but yeah, let's get on with the next stuff quickly. So guys, we're going to put you back onto the wait screen. We'll have the next series lined up pretty fast. Obviously, Jeslin needs a little bit of a break before yeah. going into a series 100%. against Love Nest. We just played three hours. Um, we will make that as quick as possible. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah thank you for, um, for holding on and being patient with us, guys. The games, I hope, are making up for it. Oh, These are. have been extraordinary games. Yeah, I mean, amazing. I, I think uh, I can speak for Twitch chat without reading. <laughs> the games are phenomenal. Some of the best we've ever seen. All right, yeah. guys, don't go anywhere. Please share out the link to this stream if you're enjoying it. Leave a follow as well. Uh, it's great to have you here. It's great to be casting and having this opportunity to uh, to showcase this event for you. Uh, don't go anywhere. It's going to be Love Nest versus Jezlin as the next series. Thank you. 